guys, we're here at Braley Municipal Stadium in the Muscle Shoals region of Northwest Alabama. A couple of teams trying to flex their respective muscles today. Valdosta State Blazers and the Grand Valley State Lakers. Number two and number one respectively. These two teams have held down those positions in the polls for the last 14 consecutive weeks. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Holly Rowe down in the field. We are set for the opening kickoff. Grand Valley State will receive the opening kick. They come into the season, this game, 13-0 overall. Meanwhile, the Blazers come in 14-0. Grand Valley State making its way back to the title game after losing in the championship game last year. Brandon Langston got a nice seam and a good return out beyond the 30-yard line out to the 33. Let's take a look at the starting quarterback for Grand Valley State. Kurt Ains, a 6'2 senior, threw 44 touchdown passes on the season against just five interceptions. He is the player of the year in Division II college football. There he is, number seven. First down and 10 for Grand Valley State from their own 33-yard line. A blitz coming off the edge. Ains incomplete intended for Terrence Banks. Let's take a look at the backs and receivers. Reggie Spearman, the team's top running back. David Kirkus, the team's top receiver. Mark, David Kirkus, great story in Division II. 32 touchdown catches this year. 22 straight games catching a touchdown. This is an offense, folks, that averages about 48 points a game. You see already, Mark, the no huddle spread attack of Grand Valley. This is a prolific offense. Number one in Division II football in total offense and scoring offense. And Kurt Ames steps back and calls a timeout for Grand Valley State University, apparently not liking what he saw after lining up at the line of scrimmage. Here's the guys that have been protecting Ains all season long. Bork, Martin, Hosford, Dosser, and Westrick to start right tackle. They have only given up 10 sacks all season, and Grand Valley's thrown the ball over 400 times. That's an unbelievable statistic. Pretty unbelievable, and uh, the guys up front, meanwhile, for the Blazers, Dwayne Smith, one of the key players to watch in the middle for Valdosta State, number 98. Brian Kelly is the head coach for Grand Valley State University. He is in his 12th year, the fifth head coach in the school's history with a winning percentage of about 75%. And uh, he sensed a, a certain confidence, Bob, about them coming into this game. And why not when you look at their numbers? No question, Mark. And it's remarkable what both of these teams have accomplished. There's 156 teams in Division II. They all started in August with the same goal of getting to this national championship game. There's only two of them left standing right now. On second down, a little receiver screen to Terrence Banks, who got rocked just short of the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and about three to go. Said Dickerson making the stop. Here's a look at the Valdosta State linebackers, Carter, Cost, and Adams. Marlon Adams, a big playmaker, 17 tackles for a loss on the season. Meanwhile, in the secondary, Burks and Turner on the corners. Dickerson, who made the tackle moments ago, and Brown, the safety. Third down and about two to go for Grand Valley State on this, their opening drive of the ball game. And you see Kurt Ains checking the play at the line of scrimmage. Comes with the draw to Reggie Spearman. And Spearman is stopped up for a loss of the play of about one yard by number 98, Dwayne Smith, the six foot, 285 pound senior. And the Lakers will have to punt on their first possession. It's not something that happens often to them. It doesn't happen much at all. Grand Valley's only punted the ball an average of two and a half to three times a game this entire season, Mark. So this punt team has not been tested a whole lot. Matt Rennery averaging a little over 32 yards per punt. A lefty with a low line drive. That'll take a Laker bounce out of bounds at the 21 yard line, which is where Valdosta State and their quarterback, Buster Faulkner, will start the offense after that 41 yard punt. Faulkner with some pretty impressive numbers himself on the season. 41 touchdown passes against just 14 picks. And here's a look at the back's end receivers. They're led by Aaron Jenkins, the team's top back. Reggie Mosley, number four, the team's best receiver. Aaron Jenkins, Mark, can fly. Number 14, the tailback. He's only about five foot six. 
but he can fly. First time he ever touched the ball in college football, he went 55 yards for a touchdown. There's an offense that averages about 34 points a game. High octane offensive units on the field. The pass is complete to C.J. Lofton, still on his feet. Lofton knocked out of bounds at the 37-yard line, a pickup of 15 on the play and a first down for Valdosta State. Here's a look at their offensive line. Sheeler, Howard, Dodson, McDavis, and Hutto, the right tackle. This is the question mark right here. They have four new starters. They've given up 52 sacks on the year. Compare that, Grand Valley's only given up 10 sacks, Mark. Grand Valley's defense a little bit underestimated. And a nice play that time, a tackle for a loss on Aaron Jenkins, made by Keontae Marshall. Marshall up front, joined by Hosford, Chad Risk, and Dan Vaughn. They have three all-conference performers up front. And Keontae Marshall, transfer from Hawaii, six foot, close to 300 pounds, playmaker up front. He's a force. Yeah, about pretty light on his feet on that last play. Second down and 12 for Valdosta State. Lofton in motion. Quick three-step drop, and it's complete. Bounds near the first down marker to Bama Adams, the 5'9 freshman. Close to the first down. Here's a look at the linebackers. Estes, Williams, and Gray. A talented group. Melvin Estes, really like a nickel back in the game at 185 pounds. Lewis and Smith on the corners. Hawkins and Mackey's the safeties. Scott Mackey, defensive secondary player of the year in Grand Valley's conference. Mark sets up a big third down and real short right here. You see Valdosta and our backs. The lead back is Lee Tarpley. They run the ISO. And they get the first down behind the nice running of Aaron Jenkins. The 5'7 junior brought down by Will Gray, number 39. One more look at the quarterback Buster Faulkner. Well, Buster Faulkner, Mark, a sophomore. Great numbers. Has thrown 41 touchdowns on the season. But you see early how he gets those statistics. A lot of short, quick passing game. Get it to those receivers. They have big-time playmakers at receiver. First down and 10. Handoff. Lee Tarpley stopped up right near the line of scrimmage. Play game, maybe a yard. Going to be tough sledding inside for Valdosta State against that front. Chris Hatcher's career ended right here on this field back in 1994 in double overtime, and he told his team before the game that it wasn't a very nice feeling his Valdosta State crew losing. And he wants to make sure that his team's final game of the season is a good one. Second down and 19. Faulkner with plenty of time. What a catch. It wasn't drawn up that way, but Aaron Jenkins caught the ball, and he was brought down by Lewis. There you see some of the uh, scramble ability of Faulkner. You see the ability right there of Faulkner just making something happen, but you also see the inexperience of Faulkner. Mark, this could have been a disaster right here as you see him flip the ball up in the air. Fortunately, they survived to set up a third down and six right here. Faulkner is three of three passing so far. Pass is incomplete. And it'll be fourth down for Valdosta State. They'll punt. It was tipped by Will Gray. Lucius Hawkins also in on the neighborhood. And uh, in for the punt is Ken Barnett. <laughs> Averaging a little over 37 per. Mark, one of the best punt returners in football, Scott Mackey. He's yet to fair catch a punt this season. Back for Grand Valley. And the streak lives right up the gut as Mackey, a nice return out near the 35-yard line. And that's where Grand Valley State will start their second offensive possession. 21 yards on the return. We'll be right back. Mark Jones back along with Bob Davey. Holly Rowe down in the field. Bob, no polls, no computers, no votes, just number one against number two on the field. Well, you're exactly right, and you sense the atmosphere here. It's a national championship game. You see the kind of effort we're getting already on this field early in this game. It's being played at a very high pace. I look for that to continue, Mark. 
These two teams have gone through a playoff type format. They've played three playoff games to get to this point. First down and 10 for the Lakers. Ains has it tipped and it's incomplete at the 33 yard line. Fatari Lions batted it down near the line of scrimmage. Mark, this is a remarkable story. Story. Kurt Ains last night was awarded the Harlan Hill Trophy for the player of the year in Division II football. He's had a remarkable career at Grand Valley. A career, Bob, that almost ended last year, the result of a knee injury. Actually, last year at this time in this very game, the finals, he was forced to watch the game from the sidelines because he had injured his knee, tore it up completely, dislocated the kneecap, tore a tendon, a big one in the knee, in the first playoff game last year, watched the game from the sidelines on crutches, and what an amazing rehab story to lead his team back to this point. It is an amazing story. In fact, he started out this season, he had five sacks. He took five sacks in the first game of the year against UC Davis, as you see the brace he wears there. They've only had 10 sacks all year. He had five sacks in the first game of the year. He didn't have confidence. He didn't want to move around. They contemplated actually redshirting him because you can play in the first three games and still have your redshirt year. But he came on and had great confidence, regained the confidence in me, and just had an unbelievable senior season. As we see Tobias Carter down on the field, uh, which appears to be a knee injury, Mark. Yeah, they are working on his leg. Tobias Carter, the 6'3", 195-pound senior, one of several seniors on that Valdosta State team, one of the leaders on that defensive unit. Rodney Edwards, his backup at that strong linebacker position. They have had uh, several injuries over the past couple of weeks. Mark, we're going to get a chance to look at it again right here. Just a simple case of him going up, trying to make a play on the ball. The ball was deflected. He probably tried to change his angle in midair and came down uh, at an unfortunate angle on that knee. Yeah, one of those freakish non-contact injuries, but good to see him get up on his own and walk off the field. Mark, when you talk about this Valdosta State defense, you're talking about speed and athleticism as a group. Without a doubt, we talked to Grand Valley's coaches yesterday. Man to man, this is the most physically talented team Grand Valley's played all year. Let's check in downstairs with Holly Rowe. Holly? Guys, you're talking about Grand Valley State's quarterback, Kurt Ames. Well, he's got a pretty good guy to throw it to. Circus Kirkus, otherwise known as David Kirkus, is the all-time leader in career touchdowns in all divisions of the NCAA. He's had 60 touchdowns in the last two years getting the ball. Watch for him today. All right, here's Ames looking Kirkus's way. And Kirkus makes the catch complete at the 41-yard line. He was working on Elliot Burks. Kirkus a nice target at 6'3", 185 pounds. Do you see Kirkus right here? One of the best receivers, Mark, I've seen all year on tape. I don't care what division or what level we're talking about. 69 career TDs, 22 straight games catching a touchdown. A quick receiver screen is complete to Banks. And Banks has a first down for Grand Valley State into Valdosta State territory at the 48-yard line. Terrence Banks, the 5'9", senior, one of 20, playing today for them. The plan early in this football game, come out and run some bubble screens. The reason, wear Valdosta's defense down. Grand Valley doesn't think Valdosta Mark has a particular amount of depth on the defensive line. They're going to try to get that defensive line running, chasing those footballs on the screen. First down and 10 for the Lakers. Ains to pass. Incomplete juggled by the Lucrecio. It'll be second down and 10. It was in his arms and catchable. But Ains put it right Excellent there. Excellent throw right here by Lucrecio. They come down and run the square in route. Had a chance to make the play. The ball bounces up in the air. Fortunate that Wesley Brown right there did not come up with the interception. Well-thrown football by Kurt Ames. Sets up a second down and 10. Trips right formation. They set up the screen, and it's incomplete. Intended for Mike Holloway, a little middle screen. Aganga Williams was covering him right there, number 23. It'll be third down and long. Mark, as we look at third and 10 coming up right here, really for Grand Valley, they're in four down territory. I don't know that I've seen a team go for it more on fourth down than I have Grand Valley. 
course, Brian Kelly, the, the coach, he's also the offensive coordinator. Anytime the head coach is the offensive coordinator, they don't want to give that football back. <laughs> Here's Ames to pass on third and ten. Buck down and sacked at the 46-yard line by Jason Koss. That's Valdosta's 56 sack this season. The key to this football game, Mark, is pressure. Can Valdosta get pressure on a team that's only given up 10 sacks? Right off the bat, they answer the question, they can. Henry to punt, standing at his own 42, a low snap. Lefty's going to aim it. Oh, that's a nice pitch and stick out of bounds. At about the two-yard line, a 42-yard punt. Valdosta State with the ball 98 yards away from a score. They're hitting hard, as always, in a title game. The NCAA Division II Football Championship, brought to you by Burger King. Now, for a limited time at Burger King, get a Simpsons talking watch for just $2.39 with the purchase of any value meal. Price and participation may vary. And by Musco Lighting. From community ball fields to professional sports stadiums, Musco makes sports lighting happen. A beautiful day here in Florence, Alabama. Zeros on the scoreboard. Valdosta State with the ball on their own two yard line. Just out of the arms of number four, Reggie Mosley, who had gotten in behind Darren Smith. But Reggie Mosley with some speed going deep. I got Mark, Grand Valley is an eight-man front that likes to lock those corners out there man-to-man. -man. Here you see the corner locked up with Reggie Mosley, probably the fastest player or second fastest player on Valdosta's team. First and ten, excellent play call by Chris Hatcher right there, trying to loosen up that defense. A pretty nice throw, too, by Faulkner. They run it. This is Jenkins bouncing it into the boundary. And pushed out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Got a nice block on the play by Lee Tarpley to spring him loose, but a pickup of 41 yards on the play and a first down for the Blazers. They come with the simple lead play right here. You're going to see an excellent block right here by Tarpley, but Jenkins busted outside, Mark, and you see the sprinter speed that he has. Offensive player of the year in the conference. He's only five foot six, but he can scoop. Yeah, you talked about his speed, the former 100 meter champ in the state of Georgia back in high school. We have a timeout called by Valdosta State. Pardon me, Grand Valley State. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, terrible news right now for the Valdosta State defense. Tobias Carter is out for the game with a torn anterior cruciate ligament. This young man's a senior. He is just crying on the sidelines and his teammates are visibly shaken. He is a guy that on the warm-ups had the most energy on this defense. It is a big, big blow for this defense right now. We're going to see how much, if any, it takes uh, the winds out of their collective sails. But, boy, that is a, a big loss, you would think, anyway. You know, Mark, sometimes with a leader like that, a vocal guy, the team steps up. It actually does the reverse thing, where there's so much love and so much caring about that player that doesn't have a chance to play in a national championship game. The other players step up a little bit. He was pivotal in their 14-0 road to the championship for Valdosta State. 11-0 on the regular season, champs in the Gulf South Conference, and then three consecutive wins to put them in this game today. A close win. They had three-point victory against Carson Newman. They had two three-point games along the way this year. Mark, and when we talk about Valdosta and their road here to the game, let's not take for granted how they got here to play the national championship today. They had to bus nine hours busting, busing from Valdosta, Georgia. The NCAA has a rule. If you're over 500 miles, they fly you. They're at 475. I think the NCAA should have gone ahead and given those extra 25 miles and flew this football team over here. I tried to cheat that a little bit. <laughs> There's a little flanker screen complete to Tom Jordan. 
And Jordan is stopped up shy of midfield by Orlando Williams, Grand Valley State's leading tackle. But a nice gain for Valdosta State. A tremendous lick right there on the little screen pass by Orlando Williams. And you're going to see Orlando Williams right here chase the ball inside out. And right there, that is a great lick, great pursuit by Orlando Williams. Second down and four now for the Blazers. Adams, and he's got a man. Jordan. Brought down at the nine-yard line. It's first and goal. Hawkins saved the touchdown for the Lakers. As many bubble screens as Valdosta throws, you're going to see them throw the bubble screen, and now the bubble screen and go. Excellent throw down the field to Tyrone Jordan. Bama Adams, the wide receiver on the bubble screen, Mark. Great play call by Chris Hatcher. First down and goal to go. The number two ranked Valdosta State Blazers. In scoring range, and Faulkner is sacked back at the 14-yard line. Good pressure from the backside. Dan Hosford and Dan Vaughn. Take one more look at that big 44-yard play moments ago. This is a football team that throws as many screens as anyone in the country. Here you're going to show that they set up the bubble. Bama Adams throws the football down the field to Tyrone Jordan. That's a case of a well-coached defense reacting to a play that's the bread and butter for Valdosta. Valdosta comes off the second phase of that and throws the bottle and go. Great concept. A real interesting chess match between the two coaching staffs right now. As Faulkner steps back and calls a timeout for Valdosta State. Grand Valley State not used to playing from behind. We'll be right back. are in the Shoals, the Muscle Shoals region in Northwest Alabama. A couple teams flexing their muscles right now, especially the Blazers from Valdosta State. Right now within scoring range. At Grand Valley State's 12. Second and goal. Jordan. He's stopped up just inside the 10 by Orlando Williams who's been busy on defense. Joe Ballard also helping on the stop. Mark, you see this is a game today of open field tackling. Grand Valley State has to tackle in the open field because it's obvious Buster Faulkner is going to get the football to those receivers on short underneath routes. So tackling today is the key. Should be a little bit easier on a rather dry field. It rained a lot here during the last couple of days, but the field Holding up pretty well right now. Third down and goal for the Blazers. And Faulkner throws it away. A wise decision. So the Laker defense holds on first and goal. Good pressure up front. And also coming from Lucius Hawkins. Good decision by Buster Faulkner. Don't make a bad situation worse. Throws the football out of bounds. Gives them an opportunity right here for a field goal. Will Rohde in to try a field goal. Coming from about 26 yards out. And it's good. Valdosta State taking the lead three to nothing. It's not often that Grand Valley State has to play from behind, but that's where they find themselves right now with that number one ranking on the line. Well, last year's championship game, quarterback Kurt Ains watched from the sidelines on crutches. Meanwhile, Ryan Brady's 12-yard touchdown run late in the fourth gave the Lakers a 14-10 lead, but then Kelly Klosterman with a pass to Luke Schuschner Took the ball all the way down to the one. Then North Dakota punched it in on the next play and went on to win it by a score of 17 to 14. Grand Valley State was a mere 29 seconds away from winning the title. But coming out of that locker room, their motto was finish what we started. And that's what brings them here today. A short kickoff out to the 30. 
Number four. Lakers going to have good field position. Justin Cezanti, the backup fullback, taking it out to the 43 yard line. Kurt Ainge putting up some very impressive numbers during the course of his career. That is unbelievable. And over the last five games of this season, which are playoff games, three of them, completing 75% of his passes over the last five games. Overcoming a lot of adversity. We chronicled the knee injury. Fractured his thumb in spring ball. Got back just in time. A couple days before the first game against UC Davis to play. First down and 10 for the Lakers. Ains complete to Kirkus. Kirkus still on his feet. And the circus is in town. David Kirkus down to the nine yard line. You're going to see Elliot Burks, number 31, try to make a play on this football. He doesn't get the ball stripped out, and you're going to see Kirkus now show the kind of ability he has. But Elliot Burks went for the football, undercut it. Mark, if you're not 100% sure you can make a play on the football, then you have to be in position to tackle the receiver after he catches it. He paid the price that time. Inside handoff to Reggie Spearman. Touchdown, Lakers! Just like that, they strike back and score. In two plays. You see why, Mark, they've scored 60 points or more four times this year, and 50 points or more three times this year. They are an explosive offense. Reggie Spearman with his 21st rushing touchdown of the season. Well, I said Grand Valley State wasn't used to playing from behind. It didn't last for that long, did it, Bob? <laughs> All of about 30 seconds, two plays, low snap. The extra point is good. The Lakers lead 7-3. to three. Our Grand Valley really only has one running play. They love to pull the tackle or the guard around, hand the football to Reggie Spearman on a rap play. I've never seen a team run the same play as many times, but you see the elusiveness right here of Reggie Spearman. And the play that led to that touchdown was the big one by Kirkus. A 50-yard pickup on a pass and run. Well, you see the ability of David Kirkus, but you also see Elliot Burke right here. Goes for the interception, and there's nobody behind you. There's nothing but grass. So a very aggressive move by the corner, Elliot Burke. And now David Kirkus shows the ability he has. Mark, he's six foot three, 40-inch vertical, very explosive receiver. He's one of about five guys that have drawn the attention of NFL scouts at Grand Valley State. Scouts have made the trip up to Allendale to check out both Ains and Kirkus. Kirk Ains, meanwhile, becoming the D2 all-time leader in total offense. Well, the fireworks are officially underway here, Bob Davy. And that, that's 23 straight games. David Kirkus has scored a touchdown, which is remarkable. That leads all divisions in football, all-time record. And four coming last week. Mosley fumbles the kickoff and is brought down at the 17-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Holly Road. Guys, you mentioned Grand Valley State, 29 seconds away from the national championship last year. Brian Kelly immediately had these dog tags made up for his team. They've worn them since last season. Every player on the team, including the coaches, wear this dog tag under their jerseys right now. They want to finish what they started. 20 seniors were on that team, an integral part of this offense and defense. They are out to finish what they started. Mark, how about this? Grand Valley, 32 of their last 33 games they've won. Last year, they averaged 54 points over 600 yards and didn't win a national championship, averaging 54 points a game. Uh, makes you wonder what it takes sometimes. C.J. Lofton making the catch on the play out to the 24-yard line. It'll be second down and about four to go. Love the idea of the dog tags, anything that motivates and works in the end. They better make sure that... Uh, Valdosta State uh, don't play the role of dog catchers today. 
73. You see Valdosta come out in the polecat formation where they spread the field right here, simply throw the screen. Lofton making the catch once again. Out over the 30 to the 31-yard line, and that'll give them the first down. The old polecat. We're waiting for that one, Bob. When you look at this polecat, the reason they called it the polecat, it's a skunk formation. Look at the receiver spread out across the field. It's one of those things that a defense has to take time and prepare for. It's really a pain for defensive coaches. But the skunk in the polecat, all it is is the skunk that defensive team. Uh, sounds, like a, sounds like a country song there, buddy. <laughs> First down and 10 for Valdosta State. And a nice run up the gut by Aaron Jenkins, folks. It's the most wide open race in Heisman history. Ken Dorsey, Willis McGahey, both of Miami, Carson Palmer, USC, Larry Johnson of Penn State, and Brad Banks of Iowa have a shot at the most prestigious award in college football. Don't miss the Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's tonight at 8 Eastern. Second down and short, about one to go for the Blazers. Jenkins has the first down. At the 43-yard line, brought down by Dustin Cole. Hey, Bob, are you surprised at all by the fact that Valdosta State has really kept Grand Valley State off balance? Well, they're upset because they had to take a bus nine hours, <laughs> and Grand Valley got to fly down here and got here in about an hour and 30 minutes. And here but comes the uh, polecat again. It's the polecat again. Valdosta State running the ball well here in the early going. And Faulkner keeps it himself and crosses the 45-yard line. Deontay Marshall making the stop. Both of these teams really don't waste much time up the line of scrimmage. Mark, if you look at this, you see how difficult it is to prepare. There's just one linebacker and only two. You have them outnumbered three to two. And he went ahead, Faulkner, and ran the quarterback sneak. That's probably what the numbers told him to do. I'm not sure that's a great check right there. Second down and eight. A little more conventional formation. And a great tackle on Greg Lofton that time, made by Melvin Estes, number 10. We talked about it moments ago, a premium today on open field tackling. And Melvin Estes is a guy the pro scouts like as a corner, and he actually plays linebacker. You're going to see the bubble screen, and he's just going to beat it with speed. You see the lineman coming to block him, but he just out accelerates him and makes the play. Melvin Estes, outside linebacker, Mark, but the pros are looking at him as a corner, transferred from Nebraska Omaha last year, immediately eligible to play this year. Third down and 10 for Valdosta State. Trying to set up the screen, and Faulkner sacked back at the 30-yard line by Orlando Williams and Dan Hosper. It'll be fourth and long, they'll punt. That's the 54th sack of the season for the Lakers. And just great recognition by Grand Valley State. Once again, Valdosta wanted to set up the screen. And you're going to see Aaron Jenkins hide in here, but look, they smell it out. Now there's nowhere for Faulkner to go, and they get the sack out of it. There's only so many times, Mark, you can throw the screen. At some point, you're going to have to throw that the football down the field a little bit if you're Valdosta. Fourth down and long and into punt. There's Barnett under pressure. Got it away. That's Scott Mackey. Boy, Mackey really fearless again. Out to the 46-yard line. Well, speaking of Valdosta State, they advanced to today's championship game with a quarterfinal win over Carson Newman. Listen to the radio call by Dick Rocky. Looking, looking. Fade route. CJ! Here they jump. We're going to throw. Looking downfield. Reggie. Here it comes on Reggie. 30, 25, 20. Oh, my God, what a catch. Here's Porter. We're blitzing. They pick it up. We hit him. He's sacked. We win. Uh, the velvet tones of Dick Rocky, the voice of Blazers football. Yeah, do you notice when it's... When you win, it's we, we win. <laughs> if they'd have lost, he might have said they lost. <laughs> Came up pretty quick, didn't it? Of <laughs> Aldosta uh, State, a burgeoning power in Division II football. 10-2, 12-1, and, and, and undefeated this year. And Mark, so many great players down there in the South Georgia, North Florida area where Valdosta is located. There's Reggie Spearman on that rat play. 
It's over midfield down to the 49-yard line of Valdosta State. About five yards to go for the first down. And you see Grand Valley running the football here on first and second down with Reggie Spearman Martin and trying to slow down that speed and that pressure of Valdosta's defensive front. 145 to go now in the first quarter. Grand Valley State leading 7-3. See Grand Valley spreading the field, no back formation right here, empty backfield. And it looks like a blitz, an all-out blitz by Valdosta, pressure in it. A flag on the play. Number 70, Dale Westrick may have moved it right Dead to ball, him. false start, on the offense, five yards from the previous spot, remains third down. Our officiating crew today from the Great Northwest Conference. Mike Batlin, the referee, the man wearing the white hat today. When he's not blowing the whistle, he is a bankruptcy trustee for the federal government. Once again, the empty formation. The last time Valdosta chose to blitz it. Here they come again, Mark, an all-out blitz. Look and out. Here's Kirkus. He's got it, and he got a block. Circus Kirkus, the big top, makes it. Valdosta tipped their hand on the empty formation before with the all-out blitz. Brian Kelly comes back and throws the jailbreak to Kirkus, and he takes it to the house. If you're going to blitz empty, you better try to disguise it, Mark. Kirkus and Ames always operate on the same frequency always on the same station feeling the same vibe they've been together for so long the extra point is good off a much better snap this time and the number one ranked lakers lead valdosta state 14 to 3. a 54 yard catch and run you're going to see Valdosta in an all-out man-to-man blitz. They're going to run the jailbreak. And you're going to watch the center come out and get a great block on the jailbreak screen right here. Number 61, Tom Hosford. And once he gets that crease, it's gone because Kirkus can really run. Simple jailbreak. It's man-to-man. -man. He hits the alley, and there you see the center, number 61, Tom Hosford. And bye-bye. Season ago, Kurt Ains was watching from the sidelines, wondering whether he'd ever make it back to playing football before, wondering whether he'd ever put the helmet and pads back on and even make it close to this championship game again. Mark, there's always a little bit of talk when a team from the south plays a team from the north. Can they run? The south doesn't dominate all the speed, as we can see. Kirkus can flat run now. Up down at the 27 yard line. Down at about 24. Ryan Kirkus, that was another touchdown catch and pass. And meanwhile, in 1954, folks, Bear Bryant took 115 football players into the desert in Junction, Texas. Only 35 would survive to play for. ESPN Original Entertainment presents the Junction Boys tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN, immediately following the Heisman Trophy presentation. And Paul Bear Bryant and Texas A&M subsequently. I think that one and nine was after the Junction season. <laughs> I think you wore many of players left after they got back in Junction. Tough to play with 35 guys. Deontay Marshall making the stop on Aaron Jenkins. The Laker defense a little jacked up and juiced. That's the third sack of the ball game for them. And you see Keontae Marshall, we mentioned before, six foot, about 300 pounds, great explosiveness. He went to Hawaii. He's from Saginaw, Michigan, went out to Hawaii. Didn't think it was nearly what it was supposed to be. I guess he hadn't, didn't like that sand and those beaches and all that sunshine, Mark. Hey, sometimes nothing like home. Second down and 15 for the Blazers. 
underneath complete to Lofton, who is drilled immediately to the 22-yard line. A big hit by Orlando Williams and Melvin Estes. Again, you see Valdosta coming back with just the simple underneath route. Grand Valley choosing to play maximum zone coverage, Mark. Just break on that football. Great hit by Estes and Orlando Williams. Ames to Kirkus. One of the indelible images of the season and so far here after the first quarter of play. 14-3 when we come back. We are back in Florence, Alabama. Home of W.C. Handy, the father of the Blues, among other notable people. Uh, Grand Valley State University fans making Bob. I think it's a, what a... 15-hour drive from Michigan, and there are a bunch of Grand Valley fans down here. I'm impressed with the support they have. They worked our hotel pretty well last night. The lovely Key West in. 14-3. Time for the Blazers to get to work. Faulkner, and it's picked off by Sidney Lewis. That thing hung up there forever. That's Lewis's second pick of the season. Bad decision right here by Buster Faulkner. Third down and 14. He tries to go up the top. Just a poorly, poorly thrown, underthrown ball. Sidney Lewis comes up with the interception. Mark, that was a mistake right there. I guess the reasoning be that it's pretty close to the kind of yardage you would have gotten on the punt. Big defensive series right here early in the second quarter for Valdosta's defensive football team. Any way you look at it, that was the first turnover of the ball game. Ames on the screen to Banks. What a move. Stopped on a dime. Down to the 22 and a first down. A touchdown saving tackle made by Dickerson. And Westrick gave him a nice block, a pickup of 23 yards. It's a bubble screen game. You're going to see more screens in this game. Quick pass right out here to Terrence Banks. You see Kirkus blocking downfield. Look at the space right here. And all they want to do is create open space for Terrence Banks to work in. You see an excellent kick, block, kick out block by Dale Westrick, as you mentioned, Mark. It's a bubble screen game. Spread the field, get the ball to speedy receivers in open space. Haynes under pressure and sacked. Back at the 24-yard line by Marlon Adams. That's the second sack of the ball game for Valdosta State. He's their leading tackler, and that's his 10 and a half sack of the season. Marlon's one of the emotional leaders for that defense. Uh, coaches tell me he's a, he's a big-time talker, but he backs it up, obviously. He has some quickness. But, Mark, the thing, the point I want to make now, field position football game. Grand Valley started on the 45, 46, 43, their last three possessions. Working with a short field. Kirkus split wide to the bottom of your screen. Spearman on the handoff. Trying to get to the edge. Couldn't get by Wesley Brown with the straight up. He's pushed out of bounds in the 18-yard line. Well short of the first down. You see Grand Valley come back again with their bread and butter play mark. The route play. They make a decision whether to pull the guard or the tackle. Here they pull the guard. They're going to kick out. Spearman off the draw action. Slides up inside. They are a wrap blocking team, meaning the guard or the tackle is going to pull whichever one's conducive. What they try to do is find the bubble or the shades of the defense, the soft spot where they're running. Kirkus now in the slot left of quarterback Ames. They come into the boundary, and a great play defensively by Elliot Burks, number 31, who brought down Banks immediately. Elliot Burks is an aggressive corner. Grand Valley comes back with the jailbreak screen this time. Elliot Burks just beats the block of the receiver, makes a play. On fourth down and long, in comes the field goal unit. As Ames comes off the field. Grand Valley marked nine for nine on field goals. They don't get to kick many field goals because they normally score touchdowns. No doubt. David Hendricks trying to be a perfect 10 for 10 on the season. He has a long of 42. And he 
just curled it inside that right upright. A 38-yard field goal gives Grand Valley State a 17-3 lead with just under 13 minutes to go in the first half. The Lakers with the lead when we come back. Welcome back, everyone, to Florence, Alabama. Grand Valley State ranked number one, leading 17-3 over number two ranked Valdosta State. Kurt Ames, the quarterback, with a couple of big plays already in this game. One of them to his favorite receiver. Actually, two of them to his favorite receiver, David Kirkus. Mark, a lot of people may wonder what's the difference in Division II football. The biggest difference is scholarship numbers. Division II has 36 scholarships to give. Obviously, Division I at 85. I believe 1AA at 60 scholarships. So 36 scholarships. They say the head coach is really like a general manager in the NFL with a salary cap because they divide those 36 scholarships up a lot of different ways. Slice it up. Make it work. A couple of teams that have so far right here on the field. Mosley. Mosley after the 35. He appeared to put it on the ground and fumble it. And it's Blazer Ball. You see the fumble right here. Close, close call whether or not he was down. Fortunately, Valdosta had a chance to get the football back. Valdosta starting in its own 34-yard line. That's the best starting field position, Bob, they've had so far this afternoon. And Mark, you see them in their favorite formation. Split back, shotgun, three wide receivers in the game. They come with the lead play right there to Aaron Jenkins. Jenkins takes it up to the 36-yard line. Aaron Jenkins, the 5'7 junior with speed to burn. The offensive player yeah, of the year in the Marshall. conference, in the Gulf Coast Conference this year. Had a sore ankle that he suffered in the game against Carson Newman. Their first round playoff game, but has since recovered for the most part. Sets up a second down and eight now for Valdosta State. They trail by two touchdowns. You see right here, tight splits by the receivers of Valdosta. A lot of crossing routes. They love to cross the receivers. And right here you see the underneath route. And they get to him with the blitz. Faulkner brought down by Keonta Marshall. Well, about seven. Marshall with his 11th sack of the season. Take a look at our ESPN game track. Ames becomes D2's all-time leader in total yards as he approaches 12,000 now. And Kirkus with his 33rd touchdown reception this year. That's right, folks. Not career, this year. Jerry Rice and Troy Edwards couldn't top that. Incredible statistic, Mark. <laughs> Third down and 15. You see Valdosta with trips into the boundary, into the short side of the field. They bring the motion back. That's Jordan. Faulkner underneath. Complete, but short of the first down to Reggie Mosley. Tackled immediately by Lucius Hawkins. It'll be fourth down, and the Blazers will have to punt once again. Another good job defensively by Grand Valley. John Jancic, the defensive coordinator, of just sitting back, playing zone coverage, and then teeing off on those little receivers on those crossing routes. Another three and out for the defense. Barnett into punt once again. A low line drive, and you know Mackey's not going to call for the fair catch. Tackle back to the 40. It's on the ground. Valdosta State ball. The second turnover of the game goes the Blazers' way. Going to get a great look at it. Gabe mentioned again, Scott Mackey, one of the best returners in the country. That ball's just stripped out of there, though, by number 47, Wesley Brown. And Great effort right there. And Mark, the timing of that could not have been better because momentum definitely on the side of Grand, Grand Valley State. And this is where they'll start, Valdosta State, their best starting field position of the day at the 40-yard line of the Lakers. And a whistle on the field. Grand Valley. 
That's their third and final timeout of the half. Lakers called the timeout. Today's game is all about a measure of football immortality for players on both these teams. That's what they're playing for. The NCAA Division II Football Championship brought to you by Dremel. Tools for the imagination. We are in lovely Florence, Alabama it's on the banks of the meandering Tennessee River. Kurt Ains' team leading 17 to 3. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Holly Rowe down in the field. Number one against number two, Grand Valley State taking on Valdosta State. Both teams undefeated. Valdosta State at 14 0. Grand Valley State at 13 0. The Blazers get the break at just the right time on that fumble on the punt moments before the break. Falk to pass. A blitz coming off the edge, and they sack him back at the 44. Melvin Estes once again. They do so many good things with him, Bob. Well, Mark, a zone blitz concept. They're in a three-man front. You're going to see Melvin Estes. Just a good job of coming underneath the back, Aaron Jenkins, sacking the quarterback. You notice Grand Valley in a lot of three-man front, 30 defense against this spread offense. Now they go to the four-man front because they feel they can get pressure with their four rushers. Second down and 13. Here's the reverse. And it's blown up on the wrong side of midfield. Dan Vaughn stayed home and brought down Tyrone Jordan. It'll be third and real long now. Dan Vaughn, number 91, a transfer for, from Michigan State. Valdosta comes with a reverse. Great play right there. And Mark, you sense Valdosta really searching right now to try to find something they can do. Unfortunately, they had great field position. Now third down and 20 back at midfield. They can't get anything established right now in this defensive football team from Grand Valley. They're one of six on third downs today. Again, Grand Valley just going to play two deep zone, rush four. There's Jenkins. Brought down way short of the first down at the 47-yard line by Marshall. It'll be fourth down. No question, Valdosta has to punt the football right here and try to get that field position pendulum to swing back their way a little bit. Bob, how did things change so drastically between the early part of the game when Valdosta was moving the ball so well? I think the speed of Valdosta early in this game shocked Grand Rapids a little bit. Another low line drive punt. This time, Mackey hangs on to it. Brought down immediately at the 17 yard line, a 31 yard punt. Let's listen in to what happened last night, a special moment for number seven eight. 2002 Harlan Hill Trophy from Grand Valley State, Kurt Ains. Ains winning the award yesterday with the second highest vote total in the history of the award. And uh, ironic, Bob, that last year he lost to Dusty Bonner in the closest vote in the history of the award. That's incredible. And Kurt Ains last night put on a show with his acceptance speech at the Harlan Hill Trophy presentation. A sharp young man. Yeah, really gracious. That time inaccurate, though, intended for Curtis. A moment ago, I said Grand Rapids, I believe. Grand Valley State is up about 20 miles outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and just a beautiful campus, Mark. Mark there's about 19,000 students on that campus. Great athletic program. They finished second in the Sears Cup in Division II, which is awarded to, uh, to I said, a great-looking campus. <laughs> and the students, I mean, too. <laughs> well, I don't want to say not a great-looking student body because I, I appreciate the interest they have. There's a bunch of them down here. Hey, blue hair is big in Michigan. <laughs> Ains, 7-12 passing. Checks that with a nice completion right there to Terrence Banks. And Bob, uh, you really keep me in tune with what's happened in the Midwest. Uh, Allendale, Michigan, right there, about three hours due west of Detroit. And there's a look at the spacious and pastoral beauty of the campus that you were referring to just a few moments ago. Pretty large school with an enrollment of almost 21,000. Well, you notice this picture was taken in the summertime because you see those green leaves and oh, all the yeah. green grass. Yeah. It looks a little bit different right now this time of the year. <laughs> Well, that's when you want to bring the recruits in, right? When it's nice and bomb. Well, it's what we did at Notre Dame, trust me. We <laughs> tried to bring them in in the summertime. Third down and five for the Lakers, who lead. Ains 
to Kirkus. How do you figure? Automatic first down. Brought down by Burks and a pickup of 15 on the play by Kirkus. Grand Valley loves to put three receivers on one side of the field, then isolate David Kirkus on the back side on the corner, number 31. Elliot Burke, just a great throw right there on the slant route. They love to put three guys on one side, leave David Kirkus on the back side, and get him one-on-one -on -one with the corner. Ains, the screen, the middle screen to Spearman. Spearman out near another first down at the 46-yard line, brought down by Aganga Williams. That was a critical third-down conversion right there for Grand Valley. Valdosta's defense playing hard, playing good. Valdosta's offense needs to keep Grand Valley's offense off the field a little bit more. This is an explosive offensive football team. Now you keep it in their hands too long, and they'll put a half a dollar up on the scoreboard on you. Once again, you see Kirkus isolated up on the top to the one receiver side. This is Lesniak, and he has the first down and then some. Brent Lesniak. The changeup runner throws a curveball, and the Valdosta State defense has a big play and another first down, a pickup of 29 yards. Lesniak was an excellent high school football player in Dwozhiak. You're going to once again see the rap play. Here comes the tackle around, the hand of the ball to the tailback, and watch the quickness right here by Brent Lesniak. An elusive back mark. He was a great high school football player. I had a chance to watch him play. He's had a very good year. He's run for over 100 yards 15 occasions this season. First and 10. Here he is again. Getting to the edge. Lesnian. Tripped up. And about the 14 yard line. Closest race in Heisman Trophy history. The field is wide open, but who will strike the pose? The Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's at 8, followed by the Junction Boys at 9, tonight on ESPN. Bob, you bringing the popcorn tonight? It's a big time night. You gotta get, we gotta get back to the hotel. National right? championship <laughs> game right now, Heisman, then the Junction Boys. Grand Valley State, meanwhile, tiling up the total yards this quarter. Inside handoff. Spearman that time brought down by Tim Thompson on the play as we approach six minutes to go in the first half. Spearman watched Lesniak on those two carries, said, you know what? I better get back in there. These guys have a good amount of depth at receiver and tailback. Again, excuse me, Mark. You see one-on-one -on -one coverage at the top. Ames on the out. Is it caught? They're going to rule it good. Wow, what a catch by the Griccio. He laid out and got his hands underneath the ball. Incredible catch right there by LaCriccio. Amazingly, Mark, we saw him in the first quarter drop an easy pass. But right here, you're going to see the arm strength of Ains. He gets the ball really flat-footed right there when he throws it. LaCriccio goes down. I think he did catch the football. Yeah. Great thing, no red flags in these coaches' pockets here. Woo. No instant it. replay. It was a catch, and we move on, Mark. Let's play it. Third and four. Ains intended for Kirkus incomplete. One of the few times you won't see them connect, especially in the red zone. Fourth down, the fans, of course, for Grand Valley chanting go, Bob. And it, I'll tell you, I'm surprised. Brian Kelly normally goes for it on fourth down. I watched him last week in the first quarter go for it twice on fourth and five. He comes back here and he's going to settle for the field goal. We think <laughs> there may be something up his sleeve right here, Mark. In comes David Hendricks already has made one today from 38 yards out. A perfect 10 of 10 on the season. This one coming from 25 and they fake it. And they don't get the first down. Like you alluded to, Bob, Brian Kelly pulled the rabbit out of his hat. Unfortunately, it was the wrong one. Ragel making the stop on the play for Valdosta State. The holder, Ryan Brady, was brought down immediately almost. 
You're going to get the instant array play, and you're going to see Brady on the little trap up in there. Not much chance for that holder right there. Todd Regal, number 92. Excellent play for Valdosta. Valdosta State, 90 yards away from the end zone. It's been the story of the day for them. Poor starting field position on their drives. First and 10. Faulkner, incomplete, but the last two passes he's thrown haven't been pretty nice. He's young. He's a sophomore, Mark. He's put up great numbers this year, but right now he's out of his comfort zone because Grand Valley's sitting back, taking away those little underneath routes and those screens. He's 9 of 15, and tough job in filling the rather large shoes of Dusty Bonner, the two-time winner of the Harlan Hill Trophy. Coach Hatcher is hard on his quarterback. He's got thick skin. Here's the screen. Complete to Mosley. And he's brought down to the 16-yard line, about four yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down and four. What a great night last night. Ran into Jesse Tuggle. Bob had a chance to visit with him, a former Valdosta State grad. Mark, he is unbelievable. First time I had a chance to meet him, I mean that sincerely. A walk-on at Valdosta, a free agent in Atlanta, plays 14 years with the Atlanta Falcons, and he's 5'10". Unbelievable. Probably 220 pounds, but I'll tell you what, does he have that gleam in his eye? <laughs> at 12 seasons where he made over 100 tackles. Unbelievable. They snapped it, but not before Faulkner signaled for the timeout. That would have been disastrous. Let's go downstairs. Uh, Holly Rose standing by with Jesse Tuggle. I am here with Jesse Tuggle. And Jesse, what did it take for you to go from being a walk-on at Valdosta State in Division II to having a 12-year career in the NFL? You know, it took a lot of heart and a lot of effort. You know, believing in yourself, believing that football is football no matter what level you play at. And um, at this particular level, you just want an opportunity, an opportunity to show people you can play. And this type of national exposure is great for the university, for the students, for the fans here. And uh, it, it's just been great. I know that you've given a lot of money to Valdosta State. What is it about that team and that program that's kept you so involved there? Because anytime you play in a small school, you want to give back. You know, these guys don't get the opportunity to be on TV each and every week. And they're not, they don't get the nice things uh, some of the D1 schools get. And uh, anytime you want to give back and help, that's what it's all about. And uh, and I appreciate my time here. I mean, it was a great time. I, won't, I wouldn't want to trade anything in the world. Listen to these fans, man. They're great, you know? Yeah! The chanting Jesse, Jesse for him now. After all these years, they still love you. I mean, they still love me here. And I tell you what, man, I'm proud to be a Blazer. Hey, we have fans all throughout the country, you know, from San Diego, up in Ohio, up in Georgia, but Austin. And I tell you what, I want to give all my boys who ever played here, who wore this uniform, this is for them, because they're a part of this whole thing. We got this program started, and I tell you what, that's what it's all about. Well, we appreciate your passion for the program. Thanks very much. Hey, Atlanta Falcon you. great Jesse Tuggle. Keep that for a PSA next time for the university. How about that? <laughs> Go Blazers! Yeah. Oh man, you can't find a better ambassador. You gotta love it, Austin State. You huh? gotta love it. <laughs> the passion for the school. Uh, putting his money where his mouth is too. Right, the check to the program. Walker's pass appeared to be tipped at the line of scrimmage. It's incomplete. Intended for Mosley, being covered by Sidney Lewis. And it's fourth down for Valdosta State. You know, I might want to try and sneak uh, Jesse on the field there. Mark, you go back to Jesse Tuggle. One thing we've talked about this week, the stadium may be a little bit smaller. One team may have had to bust nine hours, but football is football, and the passion for football is the same, whatever level you're at. This might be football at the purest level, and hey, save the videotape. Scott Mackey called for a fair catch after the 38-yard punt. Well, the Blazer fans are not disheartened, despite the fact that they trail when we come back. A celebration of Division II football last night. Andre Reed also inducted into the D2 Hall of Fame. A four-year letterman at Kutztown State from 1981 to 84. At 142 career catches, 14 touchdowns in college. And Scott Bruner of Delaware led Delaware to the 1979 Division II National Championship, named an American Football Coaches Association 
All-American went on to play for the New York Giants from 80 to 83, throwing about 28 touchdown passes, two other Division II greats. First down and 10 for Grand Valley. Here's Spearman. Boy, dancing his way between the tackles out over midfield. Down to the 49-yard line, got about three on first down. Great tackle mark by Wesley Brown. The only bad part of it, that's the free safety up there making that tackle. Wesley's, Wesley Brown's brother plays for the Chicago Bears. Played at the University of Florida. A young Alex defensive Brown. lineman, Alex yeah. Brown. Pretty good talent in his own right. Second down and seven. Spearman broke one tackle, but still in trouble. Brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 43-yard line. You see the penetration of Val Dosta's defense. Reggie Rhodes, number 44, just attacking that line of scrimmage. Right here, they bring the linebacker in the gap. Just too much penetration, Mark. No chance right there for Reggie Spearman. That's up a third down and 14 to go. You better... Ames... Picked off, and this could come back for a score. Thompson knocked out of bounds by the last man standing, Ames. Tim Thompson making a pivotal play for Valdosta State. 35 yards on the return after the pick. Big mistake right here by Kurt Ains. He comes with the play action, which surprises me a little bit on third and long. He's going to roll out and then just make a bad decision right here to throw the football. And really, Mark, it should have been a touchdown. Yes, Tim Thompson, who's only been playing football for about two and a half years, great speed, couldn't get by Ains. He was the last man. Excellent tackle, though, by Kurt Ains. I mean, that was a form tackle. Faulkner. On the screen, complete to Mosley. And Mosley is brought down just shy of the 10-yard line. Let's look at Kurt Ains again. This is a football player coming off a major, major knee injury. Give him credit. Great stick right there by a quarterback. But, Mark, it's time for Valdosta's offense to do something. Last four possessions, two plays interception, three and out, three and out, three and out. Here they go, Bob, on second down and eight. Faulkner's going to run it. Stopped at the four-yard line. It'll be third down and about two to go. Sidney Lewis making the tackle. And it's obvious that Faulkner's going to have to step up and make some plays. They're a good job of not throwing the football into traffic and just scrambling and making something happen. Third down and two, Mark. Four down territory right now. Got to be. If I'm Valdosta, run the football right here two times, make the first down. Blazers with one timeout remaining. A fumble. Brought down at the 11 by Estes is Faulkner. Almost looked like he took his eye off the ball. Mark, I think actually what they were doing, they were coming with the play-action fake. He actually got a little bit carried away ahead of himself. You're going to see right here on the snap. The snap's a little bit off. The timing of the play's off. That was a play-action pass. Unfortunate right there for Valdosta. Will Rohde now in for the field goal attempt. This one coming from 27 yards out. Knocks it through, so after the interception by Thompson, they get a field goal to cut the margin to just 11 points. Don't forget, coming up on the College Football Halftime Report, Reese Davis in the studio, along with Mark May and Trev Alberts. The Division I AA semifinal action to tell you about. McNeese State and Villanova and Western Kentucky taking on Georgia Southern and a Heisman preview. Well, there's a look at Thompson on the sidelines. Responsible for the big play moments ago on the interception. Mark, and, I, and I'm a little bit surprised right there that on third down and two, and go. that Valdosta didn't line up in eye backs and just run the football twice yeah. and get the first down. Have the ball inside the five with four downs. But there's the trophy 
that they're playing for. Gotta love the fact that this is a quote-unquote true playoff. There's no voting. There's no polls. There's no computers. There's no out-of-shape media types voting on teams and players they haven't seen before. Not that I'm saying that happens at other levels, but sometimes it's been rumored to happen. I've got to ask you, what exactly <laughs> do you mean by out-of-shape media types? <laughs> Uh, guys that work the buffet a little bit too much instead of watching <laughs> those West Coast games, say, you know? Mark, you know what this is, though? It's a ring game. Yeah. The winner of this game gets the national championship ring. And talking to Val Valdosta's coach, Chris Haster, yesterday, it's huge because if they win the national championship, the university pays for their rings. If they don't win it, they just get conference championship rings. It comes out of the football budget. <laughs> so if they win, it doesn't cost them anything for you, that national championship ring. You talk ring. about the right incentive. You darn right. Is on the return for Brandon Langston. We're here in Florence, Alabama, in Northwest Alabama at Braley Municipal Stadium. Valdosta State ranked number two in the country against number one Grand Valley State. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe. Early in the ball game, Valdosta State moved the ball down the field, took a 3 0 lead, but then Grand Valley State came back and scored 17 unanswered points until moments ago a field goal by the Blazers made it 17 to 6 and that's where we are right now. You see Grand Valley 29 seconds no timeouts. They're actually going to run a little shuffle pass right here. Dangerous one Bob. Banks lucky to make the catch on that it seems. No question Mark in this. The clock's going to run out. Valdosta's going to let it run out because Valdosta will get the football in the second half. Ball spotted at the 26-yard line. And you have to like the way that Valdosta's defense has hung in in this football game because Valdosta's offense has not been here other than that first drive. Grand Valley State, one half a football away from atonement from last year. Right now, back to the pride of Muscle Shoals High School. Reese Davis, you didn't think we knew Reese. <laughs> I tried to keep it from you, Mark. I don't know about being the pride part, but they didn't let me out of there. I finished all the classes. 17 to 6, Grand Valley State, 30 minutes away from that national championship that they were 30 seconds away from last year. Trev Valdosta State, they got points out of that last turnover, but you have to feel like that was really a missed opportunity after the interception. I think you're right. If you're Valdosta, to state you know had you going into this game that you had to play a perfect game if you were going to win this game you had to get a touchdown there and then earlier in the game Buster Faulkner throwing the interception the bottom line with this is Mark they've got to protect their quarterback they're going to have a chance they're going to have to play a perfect game I think Grand Valley just has too much they do they have too much speed on both sides of the ball not just defensively they got five sacks in the first half 57 on the entire season but it's speed on both sides of the ball if you look at Grand Valley State they run that little bubble screen to the outside where they get it to their wide receivers and David Kirkus and company and they just take it down the field to play and if you're Valdosta State, you've got to make tackles right off the bat because there's just so much speed on this offensive side of the ball. It's just great to watch them. You just think it to the outside, whoosh, touchdown. You know, you might feel pretty good if you're Valdosta State, too, after that big average. They held them to 17 yeah, in the first half. They've done a pretty I mean, good job. Pressure as well. They're playing pretty well defensively. Yeah, we'll see if we finish this up as exciting in an exciting fashion like we have the one double-A games. One great finish, another one unfolding. We'll talk about it when we come back. Back under the bright lights here at Braley Municipal Stadium. We are back for the beginning of the third quarter. And this is the Division II championship game between Grand Valley State leading right now 17-6 over Valdosta State. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Holly Rowe down in the field. And Bob, one of the questions begging coming into the ball game was, could Valdosta State slow down Grand Valley State's very potent offense? 17-6, uh, to six, maybe yes, maybe no. What do you think? Oh, they've hung in there against a very explosive offense. The problem is Valdosta's offense, zero yards in the second quarter. So Valdosta's defense hanging in there. It's important right now. Valdosta gets the football to start the second half. They need to establish something. Easier said than done, though, because they have four new offensive linemen starting on that football team. And what a great story, Ains and Kirkus for Grand Valley State. Kirkus with his 16th career 100-yard receiving game. This one of the major plays in the ball game so far, taking it the distance for the touchdown, hauling in the pass from Ains. As Grand Valley State scored 17 unanswered points, one of the big plays to keep Valdosta State in the ball game. Tim Thompson with a pick, Ains saving a potential touchdown right there with the tackle, and that is by and large part 
kept Valdosta State in the ball game. They only got a field goal after that interception, but still at 17 to 6, they are very much in it as we get set here for the beginning of the third quarter. Reggie Mosley exhorting on the fans from Valdosta State that have made the trip. Mark Reggie Mosley, an explosive football player. Last opportunity he had on a kickoff return, he really sliced it right up the middle. You get the feeling that if Valdosta is going to come back and win this football game, they need to get a huge play from some area other than their offense because their offense is struggling right now. And, Bob, look at the formation by Grand Valley. Uh, sometimes they like to use something unorthodox. This time, though, a little bit more conventional approach. will be Mosley at the 10. Takes it out to the 26, a 16-yard return on the kickoff. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Guys, Chris Hatcher told his Valdosta State team that they are one block away from making something happen. He says, we've been in a lot of close games this year, and he wants his team to realize that and come back. Now, for Brian Kelly, he said that they are playing great. He likes what they're doing on defense. The only thing they changed on offense was to make some more protections, pick up some more protections from the pressure the defense is putting on. I also said, what would you think of Ains' tackle at the end here? And he said, I told him if he keeps it up, we'll make him a defensive bat. <laughs> They'll have to be in another lifetime. The senior, one of 20, playing their final game for Grand Valley State. Walker's pass incomplete intended for Lee Tarpley, who's rocked out of bounds. When you talk about these two teams getting ready to play each other, Mark, to put it in perspective, a national championship game, they find out Saturday night that they're playing each other. Think of the preparation time compared to Ohio State Miami getting ready for the Fiesta Bowl. Yeah, week, months almost versus days. It is incredible how they turn around. And both these teams left Wednesday. So you're looking at really a two day work week in preparation for this game. It's a heck of a roller coaster ride for both these teams. These are the final two after the playoff began. Faulkner had it tipped at the line of scrimmage incomplete. Orlando Williams, who has been extremely prominent defensively for Grand Valley State as we look at the first half statistics. You look at this total yardage, Mark. What jumps out at me right here, the sacks right here, uh, created by Grand Valley State, but zero yards offense in the second quarter for Valdosta really took the winds out of their collective sails on third down and ten right here. Lofted in motion. Handed off inside. Jenkins stopped up by Dan Vaughn. Transfer out of Michigan State all-conference selection. And a very impropitious beginning to the third quarter on a three and out. Not much confidence State. right now, Mark on Valdosta State's offensive football team. Barnett into punt. Mackey backpedaling to the 27. He put on the brakes and fell at the 46. But there's a flag down at the 41-yard line on the far side of the field after that 45-yard punt and 19-yard return. I believe we're going to get a clip right here. A block in the back on Marlon Adams, the linebacker from Valdosta on punt coverage. Illegal block in the back on the return team. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First and ten. That was the first Valdosta penalty of the ball game. And Kurt Ains set to take the reins of this offense now for Grand Valley State. Ains with a very athletic family. Actually, his brother, John, played fullback at the University of Michigan. Ran into an NFL scout on the way here on the flight. And he said that Ains will definitely get a look from several teams, whether he be drafted or whether he become a free agent. Come the Combines in April. First down and 10. Spearman, the lone back, number one. And Spearman on the wrap play. Spearman Out to the 37-yard line. Brought down by Dickerson. Got a good block by Westrick. 
Mark, we keep talking about this rap play. There's so much checking that goes on the line of scrimmage. And I want you to look at this bubble right here. What they do is try to find that bubble, then bring the lineman around and lead up through in that soft spot on the defense. So a lot of checking at the line of scrimmage by Kurt Ains to find where to run the rap. Here's Spearman again, making a nice lateral move. Spearman. Got the first down at the 43-yard line. Reggie Spearman, the 5'9 senior. Kimmy he had 20 touchdowns coming into this ball game. First down. An all-conference selection, first teamer. Mark, interesting in Division II, players can transfer to Division II schools and be immediately eligible as long as they were eligible at the institution they left. So you see a lot of transfers on both of these teams. You can transfer down from Division I or AA immediately eligible. Some guys just want to play. First down and 10. Spearman, there's a flag down at the 40-yard line. Spearman, Spearman brought down play. at the 46. 47 with the tackle. Right, Wesley, Brown. Wesley Brown. There's going to be a hold against Grand Valley State. We'll bring this one back. Brian Kelly, we look at him there on the sideline. Not only the head coach, serves as the offensive coordinator and also the quarterback coach. That's a lot of power in one man. Well, that is. <laughs> a lot of decision making. That is, and something that's common in Division II, you take advantage of all your coaches. You don't have the luxury of having a nine-man coaching staff as Division I has. Well, Kelly says, this is my best team, no question ever, at Grand Valley State University. And they have certainly responded to each and every challenge this year. And 13-0. Bouncing back from a bitter disappointment in the championship game here last year. First down and 20. Ames barely got that one off. Ames pass it's incomplete. Sometimes it's not the destination, but it's the journey. Here's a look at how they got to this point against University of Pennsylvania, Indiana. Reggie Spearman rushed for 112 yards and four touchdowns. They won big time. Then last Saturday in the semifinal game, Haynes throwing four touchdown passes, all of them to Kirkus. As they defeated Northern Colorado 44 to 7. They had a huge lead at halftime and shut it down. Average margin of victory in the three playoff games, 40 points, and that's in the playoffs. They are rolling, and here's Kirkus on the screen. Kirkus throw a big top over him. The circus is in town. Wow. How good is David Curtis. 67 yards. Incredible, Mark. First down and 20. You throw the jailbreak screen, and David Kirks it takes David Kirkus takes it the length of the field, 67 yards for a touchdown. He can run. That might be, Bob, the most deceiving part of his game. His speed might be understated and underestimated. Now going over 4,000 yards receiving for his very illustrious career coming to a close here tonight under the bright lights in Florence, Alabama. David Kirkus, number 80, continuing to rewrite the D2 receiving record book and touchdown record book. It's Ains to Kirkus, a familiar refrain. And in the land of the blues, these guys are making some sweet music on the football field. We'll be right back. David Kirkus. Yeah, they look, might be. Mark, we look on the all-22 angle. Once again, trip receivers to one side. Kirkus by himself. They're going to run the jailbreak screen, and he's going to take it to the house on the backside of trips. A simple play from the standpoint of calling it, but great execution right there in the speed of David Kirkus to split those two defenders against the defense that can run. Bob, he has a 54 and a 67-yard touchdown today. Can we get him to New York tonight for that? <laughs> if you're right in vote, some late ones. <laughs> Don't forget we'll have that Heisman special for you tonight. 
Immediately following the game here on ESPN, this is Clemens. And one more look at David Kirkus, the record-setting receiver from Grand Valley State University. Real speed, real action, real touchdown, and a real star, David Kirkus. Boy, a daunting task ahead now for Valdosta State, trailing 24 to 6. That's the handoff to Jenkins. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Guys, something I was impressed about by Kirkus after his touchdown reception, he came over to the sideline and just did a huge bear hug, jumped on top of his offensive tackle, Dale Westrick, to thank him for the downfield block. Now, you know, quarterbacks often think there are receivers often thank the quarterback, but I liked it that he came back and thanked that big offensive tackle. <laughs> Plenty of love to go around, Holly, when you're leading 24 to 6. They come on a blitz that time, and it's picked up. That's made by Jordan. Nine, Jordan. Jordan brought down at the Drop by 35. 46. Cole the making the stop on the play Cole. for the Lakers. They're about five yards short of the first down. Mark Valdosta State with the four new starters on the offensive line. Grand Valley, a very experienced, senior-dominated, mature defense. Tough matchup for Valdosta offensively. Come with a little more pressure, but a good pickup and a nice catch by Mosley for the first down at the 42-yard line. Reggie Mosley, the team's Leading receiver, over 1,200 yards coming into this game with 15 touchdowns. Gets the first down. They've got to keep the chains moving at this point. First down. Mark Grand Valley with 55 sacks on the season. We talked about that defensive front. A lot of talent. They're playing a lot of three-man front today. Kind of their dime package. UCS is coming on the blitz. They go underneath the pass complete. The C.J. Lofton pushed out of bounds right near the 45. Second down and about seven to go. Anytime you're going to score as many points, going back to Grand Valley's offense right. that they score, you have to get those big explosions. They are an unbelievably explosive football team with T Terrence Banks, David Kirkus, and the little tailback, Reggie Spearman. On second down and seven. The screen complete to Adams. Adams run down and brought down at the 43 by Melvin Estes. Tough to fool number 10 on defense. Mark, you see why people want to get speed on the field. Melvin Estes, once again, a transfer from Nebraska Omaha, shows you the speed out there in the open field. I mean, it's a bubble screen fest. Melvin Estes <laughs> just beats the block acceleration and makes a play. You see him right here. He's only about 175 pounds. He is their starting Sam linebacker in regular defense, but also like a nickelback. More pressure. Faulkner just got it off, and it's picked off at the 23-yard line. Smith came up with the pick. It was a result of good pressure by Lucius Hawkins. Grand Valley, good pressure on the quarterback. Lucius Hawkins actually is the nickelback coming from the field. Buster Faulkner fortunate to get rid of that football, but a great interception right here by number 19, Darren Smith. It's like sharks in the water right now. Oh. Everybody on Grand Valley State team wants to make a play. Lakers with the ball at their own 23-yard line. That graphic says it all, Mark. 13 total yards since the first quarter. Spearman brought down at the 25-yard line by Wesley Brown. Hey, Bob, we have done a full slate of college games this year, whether it's Division I or Division II. The rat play and the bubble and jailbreak screens, universal throughout, aren't they? No question. And who's the best team in Michigan right now? <laughs> that's We've a good seen question. Michigan. We've ah, seen Michigan State. Ah, that's a good I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> Offensively, this group here 
Might not be far. I don't Biden, think. It. Don't give me the mic now, Bob. Go step up and make a strong statement right here. All right, give me a drive. Give me a drive to think about it. Ains rearing back. Banks incomplete. Banks at the 43 yard line. Incom incomplete intended for Turner defending Banks. on the play on Banks. It'll be third down and about eight to go, and Turner comes up limping. They've had a lot of injuries, especially on defense for Valdosta State. Well, you, you think about today is their 15th game of the year. They've played nonstop since late August. One open date. That's an incredible season. And back to your point, I'll say the Lakers are the best offensive team in Michigan, in the state. <laughs> With all due respect, to Michigan State and Michigan. And you see them in their empty backfield right now where they displace the tailback. They're going to run the reverse route play right here. Didn't get far with it. Banks brought down at the 25-yard line. Did I leave out the Detroit Lions, too? <laughs> <laughs> nice tackle on the play. Three and out. And speaking of the second. Lions, there's, Wait a second. there's a lot of Grand Valley, Valley fans taking shots at the Lions here. <laughs> Nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Third punt of the afternoon for Grand Valley State. Desperately need a big play in the kicking game right now. The Valdosta does to get back in this football game. Winnery, the lefty. A low returnable punt at the 40. Mosley put it on the ground, but luckily for them, it goes out of bounds. A 35-yard punt, five on the return. The Blazers got to start blazing when we come back. The NCAA Division II Football Championship, brought to you by Maglite. It's never dark in America. A look at downtown Florence, Alabama, a little bit of glow at night. Uh, had a chance to see the Alabama Music Hall of Fame uh, yesterday, went for a little tour. Well, you went to see Helen Keller's yeah. childhood home, right? Her birthplace, just around the corner in Tuscumbia. Faulkner. Incomplete as Mosley couldn't keep his feet in bounds. Good pressure, meanwhile, coming from Todd DeVries, number nine on the back side for Grand Valley State. It'll be second down and ten. Excellent job of Faulkner stepping up in the pocket. The throw right on the sidelines. At right toe, Mark. Right toe is on the line right there. Unfortunate felt for Valdosta. Second and ten at the 44. Field Jenkins pushed out of bounds on Grand Valley State side of midfield at the 49 by Sidney Lewis, the 5'10 senior. It'll be third down and about three or four to go for Valdosta Martin, State. Chris Hatcher's done a great job at Valdosta. He's 29 years old, 36 and 3 as a head coach at Valdosta. As you mentioned, played quarterback there. Loves this school. They're a young football team. Quite honestly, they're surprised that they're here in this national championship game this year. They lost a lot of players off the last year's game. Yeah, they've really accomplished a lot. Some might think they overachieved in getting this far. Third and three. Paramount, they convert, which they do. A nice pass and catch going to Mosley. The 44-yard line got the first down by about a yard or two. Reggie Mosley, the team's leading receiver coming into the ball game. Move the chains. Into the ball game comes Lee Tarpley for Bama Adams, the tight end. Slight delay down in the field. First and ten. out of bounds at the 43 got right back to the line of scrimmage pushed out by Marcus Spencer folks don't forget tonight college football Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's 8 o'clock Eastern 5 Pacific time that's right here on ESPN and uh, well we thought you wanted to know so here's a look at my picks I'll go with the 
greatest story, fuzzy, feel-good story of the year in Brad Banks of Iowa, then McGahee and Dorsey, one, two, three, in that order. Bob, you? I'm gonna, I'll, I'll I'm let you go. Wait. Way to play? Wait. Keep away. Let me huh? think about it. <laughs> okay. Second down and ten. Faulkner in deep trouble. And he wisely throws it away. As for Bob Davies, Heisman picks. I'm going to go with Carson Palmer. The reason, coached against him four years, had the opportunity to recruit him. I like him. I think he's hotter right now than any quarterback in country, but he played the toughest schedule. No comment? Good choice as well. Good choice. I just thought I'd go with Banks. We uh, saw Iowa so frequently, and he was on nobody's radar at the beginning of the season. Third down and ten. Faulkner completes it. Reggie Mosley. And as for Holly Rowe, Holly, who do you like? Well, guys, I like Brad Banks. And I know because we covered Iowa a lot this year that I was kind of thinking maybe it wasn't an objective view. So I went back and looked at all the numbers and compared everybody. And I think that he stands on his own as a Heisman contender. I was frustrated that a lot of people looked back to Ken Dorsey's entire career instead of just one year. I think Brad Banks had the best year of anybody. Point well taken. Mark, this is huge right here. Fourth down and about a yard and a half. And they run a trick play, and it works to Jenkins. The quarterback, Buster Faulkner, walked away from the snap in a move of deception, and it worked against Grand Valley State. Mark, very well-designed play right here by Chris Hatcher. Buster Faulkner, the quarterback you mentioned, he's going to walk away like he's going to be in a position to call timeout. Then it's a direct snap right here to Jenkins on the lead play, and they convert the first down. No deception and no game on that play. Jenkins brought down. Go ahead and just watch that play in real time. Jenkins on the direct snap. Big first down. Well, Hatcher is a disciple of Hal Mummy, and Hal Mummy is a coach that uh, had a lot of tricks up his sleeve. I asked him if he was going to wear all that, tie, that uh, towel around his neck on the sidelines. <laughs> but you already saw Hal Didn't Mummy. Do that deal, huh? He said he wasn't going to get near that. <laughs> Second down and 12 for Valdosta State. Trailing 24 to 6. Complete to Mosley on the screen, brought down at the 29-yard line. Good tackling by Dan Hosford. Hosford, excuse me. Good. One thing I found out: don't run the bubble where Estes is. Estes is too quick. The lineman can't get out and block him. Watch Melvin Estes here. He attacks that bubble screen before it can develop. He's too quick. Throw it away from him. A 5'11 senior having a heck of a day. Tenth play of the drive for the Blazers. Adams in motion. Heat coming again. Complete. Adams brought down at the 23-yard line, about five yards shy of the first down. Great read. Great read by Buster Faulkner. Grand Valley comes with the weak side zone blitz. They drop the safety down. Here's the soft spot, and he's going to throw the football out in the flat against 3D. Excellent read of figuring out what side the zone blitz was coming from and throwing the football away from it. Fourth down, and this time there will be no trickery. A call a timeout. They're 12 to 16 on fourth downs this season. Back with more in just a minute. Clear, cool night here in Florence, Alabama. Grand Valley State looking to go 14 and 0 and take home a national title with the lead right now, 24 to 6. Valdosta State with a great reputation, but they need some results right now. Flags down in the play. Faulkner in trouble and brought down. Sacked to the 31 yard line by Orlando Williams. Mark, I think we're going to get an offside right here that will turn it into a fourth and short for Faldosta. Brian Kelly's going to make sure that he coaches this thing right through to the end. 
the full 60 minutes as they led for most of the game until the final 29 seconds last year. You're going to see right here on the replay, they're coming with the inside linebacker blitz. Orlando Williams is up in that A-gap. Excuse me, William Gray is up in that A-gap. There you see John Jansen, the defensive coordinator for Grand Rapids on the sidelines. He lived with Chris Hatcher when they coached together at UCF. So he knows this offense extremely well. John Jansen's done a great job at Grand Valley State. Fourth and short. Faulkner keeps it himself. It looks like he got the first down. Now you alluded to the fact that uh, Jancic and Hatcher were roommates. He said just half jokingly, Bob, geez, I wish I would have paid more attention to his offensive philosophies. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to decipher and decode some of those things that are going on in the field right now. So far, though, Jancic right there, his defense doing an outstanding job holding an offense that usually averages some 34 points a game to just six so far. First down and 10 for Valdosta State. Faulkner on the move. Boy, he can be elusive all the way down to the eight yard line near the first down. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Hey guys, we see Buster Faulkner running for his life. Well, he had to fight for his life to get this quarterback job. Six different players auditioned for the job last spring, and he was a walk-on. Somehow, though, he made it through that entire workout, and he came out of spring as the number one guy. Chris Hatcher said, I just liked him because the kid's a winner. He won a state championship in high school, and he doesn't have the greatest skills in the world, but he wills our team to a win. Yeah, Holly, from a great program, Parkview in Georgia. And Chris Hatcher said his goal is simple. I'm talking about Buster Faulkner, get the ball to the wide receivers and let them run. Mark, he's complete 65% of his passes on the season, so he's done a great job starting as a sophomore. Hey, 41 touchdowns and speaks for itself. Today, 21 of 32. This is the 13th play of the drive coming up for Valdosta State, their largest, longest drive of the night. 421 to go. They trail 24 to 6. 421 to go in the third period. A little eye formation this time for the Blazers. Jenkins stopped. And about the seven yard line by Keontae Marshall. Grand Rapids, excuse me, I said Grand Rapids again because it's located right out of sight of Grand Rapids. Grand Valley State really strong up front, Mark, on defense. Six transfers on that defense. So taking advantage of those Division II rules where they're immediately eligible, eligible to play. Toss into the boundary, Jenkins, touchdown, Blazers. Jenkins with his 11th rushing touchdown this year. Valdosta going back to I formation football, running the football in the end zone, and Mark, this is still a football game. Oh, very much so. I'm a little bit surprised that Valdosta doesn't go for two right here, down 24 to 12. As they line up to kick the extra point, Will Rohde. He knocks it through, and the lead is down to just 11 points with 3.51 to go in the third quarter. Chris Hatcher's not known for eye formation football, but you see the fullback Lee Tarpley on the lead block on the toss sweep. Just simply toss the ball to Aaron Jenkins. He cuts it back inside, actually cuts back. And if you're Aaron Jenkins, you like this kind of hole right there, Mark. That's a crater in there. Oh, looked like it. You can bet that John Jancic and his defense haven't forgotten about, I wouldn't call it a collapse, but a couple of plays that really cost them the title last year. One of them, the big gainer on a blitz they came with late, which took the ball all the way down to their own one-yard line by North Dakota. 
and just a, an intangible thing, I think, in this game, Mark. Valdosta's average margin of victory in the playoffs, six points. Grand Valley's 40 points. So Valdosta's been behind before. They've been in a bunch of tough football games. This football team ain't going to quit. Yeah. And here, what you talk about, the scramble kickoff, if we can take a look right here at the kickoff formation, they scramble so that Grand Valley cannot figure out and count out who to block. Here's a look at Banks on the return. Spins out of harm's way out to the 31-yard line. Banks on the return. Well, this is number one against number two for just the Stop second time in the 30-year history Brazil. of the D2 championship game. Grand Valley State, number one. Valdosta State, number two. Those two teams have held those respective rankings for about the last 14 consecutive weeks. Mark, this is a big-time trip. They come down here Thursday night, Friday night, both teams staying after the game tonight. Florence, Alabama's had this for 17 straight years. They do a great job. This is a great opportunity for these players to play in the national championship game. It's been a wonderful week. Lesniak in the ball game, brought down to the 33-yard line after game two. two. Jason Cost. The Mike linebacker, middle linebacker, making the stop. I'm starting to sound like you now, Mike linebacker, huh? Well, you're picking up the lingo as we go. A little football 101 on ESPN.com. That's what will happen to you, folks. Start reading that stuff enough. The second down at about eight. One yard game, second and nine. The tailback in the game right now, Lesniak, he was all conference last year before being replaced this year by Reggie Spearman. So he's a good football player. Gains to Kirkus, incomplete at midfield. Kirkus appeared to lose his footing while coming out of his break. And it'll be third down and long now for Grand Valley State. Valdosta Mark gets away with one here. It's a broken coverage. They come with the weak side zone blitz. They gave up the outside thirds. Just too much pressure for Kurt Ains to make a good completion. Third down and eight right here. Huge play in this football game for Valdosta's defense. Once again, up at the top, Kirkus isolated away from the three receivers. Aims to pass, completes it for the first down at the 40-yard line. Number 30, Mike Holloway, the backup tight end with his first reception of the ball game. That is a huge reception by Mike Holloway. He's in the football game for number 87. Phil Condon. So everybody in the stadium thought it was going to go outside, and you see the tight end sit down right here between the zone, and it's a great throw right in there between two zone defenders. No time for the defense to catch his collective breath. This offense likes to go to quick tempo. Lesniak breaking a couple of tackles for a small guy all the way down to the 47-yard line. Wesley Brown making the stop. It'll be second down at about two to go for Grand Valley State, a gain of eight. Lesniak is an explosive back. Almost broke that thing out of there. And if it wasn't for the tackle by Wesley Brown, he might have taken that one to the end zone. Ball at the 47. Kirkus split wide to the bottom of your screen. Handed off to Lesniak. He's brought down behind the line of scrimmage Lesniak at the 49-yard line. It'll be third down and about four to go. Good tackle by Jason Cost. Another third down opportunity for Valdosta's defense here on this third and fourth. They've played consistent. They played hard. They need to step up now, Mark. This is a big chance for them right here to get this football back. The result of that last long drive by the offense kept the defense a little rested. The 4 of 10 on third down, Grand Valley State is. You see the empty formation. Three receivers to one side, two to the other side. Ains complete. They got the first down to Banks. Tackle finally at the 37-yard line, but once again, Ains showing a lot of calm, a lot of cool, a lot of moxie in the pocket. Converts on third. On the stop. Time out for an injured player. Ganga Williams shaking up on the play. A strong safety, backup strong safety for Valdosta State. As time winds down here in the third period with 1.14 to go. 
Terrence Banks is actually the leading receiver for Grand Valley. You're going to see him on third down and five. He's the short option route runner that you want to get his hands on the football and let him run with it after the catch. Right there you see Ains a good job of finding him on the option route. He sits down, then he spins out of there and gets the first down yardage. This is a good lick right here at the end of this play. We didn't get an opportunity to see it. Terrence Banks came into this ball game with over 100, actually 1,104 yards. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, I have a very unusual story. The women's volleyball team from Grand Valley State came all the way from Michigan down to northern Alabama to play in a volleyball tournament three months ago. Knowing the national championship game was going to be here, the girls snuck in here and made this little tape sign that said Laker Football 2002. They <laughs> stuck it to the scoreboard and they told all the football players, check for our sign when you go back in. They said they hoped it gave them karma for this national championship game. It was still here. Wow, Holly, that's that's pretty amazing. They, they, did they sneak in here on the, the darkness and cover of night? I guess, is there any truth, Bob, to the rumor they tried to tear down the goalpost, take them home, and couldn't fit it in the van? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know, but that's a great story right there by Holly. And once again, you talk about Grand Valley State, second in the Sears Cup. All points for all sports in Division II. Great athletic program. Uh, Williams running off the field under his own power. Back-to-back -back okay. third down conversions, Mark, for Grand Valley State. Kurt Ains has come a long way since a 10-year-old. And his dad, John, tested his accuracy by having him throw at a 4 by 4 post in the backyard at home from 20 yards away. It's all about accuracy. This time he hands it off to Lesniak. Well, you see the change of pace between Lesniak and Spearman. And, uh, folks, 1954, what a year. Bear Bryant took 115 players into the heat and desert of Junction, Texas. Only 35 made the cut. The movie debuts tonight at 9 Eastern time, The Junction Boys. From all reviews, Bob, Bob is supposed to be very, very compelling and entertaining. And I've had a chance to talk to some people that had a chance to pre-screen it and see it. And they're football people. They say it's a great, great movie. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Lesniak on the wrap. Lesniak Run again down the near the right near down. the first down at the 27-yard line by Aganga Williams, who was shaken up a few moments ago. And we have to talk about Grand Valley State's offensive line. It's an experienced group. Only 10 sacks given up coming in all season. And Mark, it really doesn't matter which running backs in that football game. They all seem to gain yardage, and that's a credit to this offensive line. They do a great job on those angle blocking schemes that you see so much of. And also the jailbreak screens where you see those linemen pulling out in front. Let me ask you this. With all the screening, with the bubble screen jailbreaks and the wrap plays, do you need a special type of offensive lineman in there? I think that's a great point, Mark. With these spread offenses, you see a much more athletic type of offensive lineman than you saw several years ago when teams were just big zone teams. Laker fans making the drive some 14 hours. How about this guy right here on that helmet? Louis the Laker, right? Yeah, he's an he's intimidating looking cat, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> See Kurt Ains changing the play from the sidelines at the line of scrimmage. Looking Kirkus's way, but he hands it off to Lesniak. Fighting to stay afoot, but brought down finally for loss of about Grandin. two yards. I'm impressed with Lesniak. He is a quick little running back. Came into the game with nine touchdowns on the season. Almost 700 yards rushing. And the Grand Valley State University Lakers now just 15 minutes away from a title. Welcome back, everyone, to Florence, Alabama, the Division II National Championship, Grand Valley State with the lead, 24-13, as we begin the fourth quarter here. It is second down and 13 to go for the Lakers. Now just 15 minutes away from completing a storybook season. Curtis on the catch. Stopped at the 14-yard line, and he picked up another first down, working on Elliott Burks, a 14-yard gain. 
Mark, what makes it so difficult, once again, trips receivers over here, and you leave the cornerback one-on-one. You're going to see the safety come on the blitz, one-on-one -on -one coverage. You cannot stop Kirkus on the backside. So anytime you roll your coverage over to the trips, you come back to the one receiver route. If you don't roll it and you keep the safety weak, they go out to the trip side because they have a numbers advantage. Gives them a first down and Spearman back in the ball game, brought down immediately at the 19 by Jason Cost. Kirkus today has gone over 200 yards receiving. Has a couple of touchdown catches. And he continues to rewrite the D2 record books. And the defense, five sacks and two interceptions, making a statement as well. A unit that's sometimes overlooked because of all the fireworks on offense. No question. And an amazing stat, Grand Valley with 234 yards run after the catch in this football game. 12 play of the drive, pass complete. Banks stopped up right as he made the catch at the 16-yard line. It'll be third down and long. Wesley Brown making the tackle in the play for Valdosta State. Valdosta will run and hit you. There's no question about that. I'm really impressed with this defensive football team with their effort and how they run to the football, Mark. Once again, you notice that you see Grand Valley State in the trips formation. Three receivers to the top, one receiver to the bottom, but that one receiver down here is Kirkus. Very tough deciding where to roll your coverage. Ains looking Kirkus's way. Touchdown! No, now they're saying incomplete. They're saying it's incomplete. A great route and a well-timed throw by Kurt Ains to David Kirkus. We're going to get a chance to look at it again. I don't think he did have control of that football. It was hard to see from that angle, Tough but you angle. can see that the ball squirted out, Mark. In to attempt a field goal now from 33 yards out. Already made one from 38. It's snuffed out. And Valdosta State stays alive. You have to love the heart of Valdosta State's defense. They have hung in here this whole afternoon. And Mark, that may be the spark right there on the field goal to give them a chance. But I go back. Coming into this game, Grand Valley scores so many touchdowns. They only attempted nine field goals all year. Today they've missed a fake field goal opportunity, and now they botched the field goal handling right there. Giving Valdosta State a little bit of life. A nice run over the left side by Aaron Jenkins. Game of about seven. One more look at the drop touchdown pass by Kirkus. Amazing when you look back on football games how things happen. Right there you see the drop touchdown pass by David Kirkus, which leads to the botched field goal. And now momentum definitely on the side of Valdosta. Valdosta State trying to keep its dream 14-0 season alive. Jenkins getting to the corner. Got the first down at the 40-yard line. Aaron Jenkins tackled by Orlando Williams. They'll move the chains. Because Grand Valley State has chosen to play a lot of 2D, five under coverage, maximum coverage to take away the short crossing routes, Aaron Jenkins is the best weapon right now running the football against Grand Valley. But how long can Valdosta stay patient here, Mark? That's the key. Good part of the period remains with 12-10 to go in the fourth. Blitz coming. Faulkner sacked back at the 30. Estes once again. That's the sixth sack of the day for the Laker defense. Melvin Estes, you're going to see coming from the field right here on the blitz. A zone blitz concept, Melvin Estes, Mark, defensive football player of the game today. He has played a great football game. Valdosta, if they could have remained patient and run the football, they'd give up the big sack to make the second and 
They haven't had anyone to match up with Estes today. Aaron Jenkins, the lone back. Pass complete to Mosley, and Mosley is brought down at the 37-yard line by Scott Mackey. It'll be third down. 14, Scott Mackey. And about 13 to go. Third and 14. Important play coming up for Valdosta State to keep this drive alive. They've got a fresh breath of life. And stuffing out that field goal attempt. A 3 of 15, though, on third down today. See Grand Valley again in their three-man front package. Linebackers up in. They decide to bring the linebacker on a twist stunt. And here they go, complete. Jenkins didn't get the yardage necessary. Pushed out of bounds at the 41 by Darren Smith. It'll be fourth down, and in they come to punt. Mark, and you have to go back again to the first down call by Chris Hatcher with momentum on Valdosta's side, running the football, giving it to Aaron Jenkins. You get a little bit greedy and try to go down the field, and they sack you for a 10-yard loss. Yeah, Jenkins got a nice chunk on first down, and that's Dustin Dodson, the injured center for Valdosta State. Be fourth down and seven. No punt. This is the seventh punt of the day for the Blazers. Valdosta, one of the few teams in the country, Mark, that go with tight punt with no gunners. Most teams you see with the wide gunners, right. they chose to go tight punt and zone protect. They almost got that one blocked. Lakers brought a little heat up the middle, and Maggie calls for the fair catch for the second time in this ball game. That for somebody that hadn't called for one the entire season. We'll be right back. Back under the lights here in Florence, Alabama, Braley Municipal Stadium. Fourth quarter action, ten and a half minutes to go. Grand Valley State leading 24 to 13. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davy and Holly Rowe. A very compelling Division II championship game. Ames escapes harm's way. There's a flag down, and Ames is brought down at the 14. Daryl Baker made the sack on the play. There's a flag down at the 28. And Kirkus is limping downfield. Mark, it may be holding on number 31, Elliot Burks, the corner on David Kirkus. That's what they just called. As we see Kirkus shaking up a little bit on the play. Valdosta went man-free coverage. Elliot Burks locked man-to-man -man on David Kirkus. David Kirkus had him beat on the sidelines, and I do think Elliot Burks reached up and held him. Look at the day that Kirkus has had, 208 yards and a couple of touchdown catches. One more look at what happened on that play. Once again, man-to-man, -man, bump and run. Kirkus right there. Oh, oh somersault. No. A lot of jostling going on. I'm not sure who initiated that contact. It looked like David Kirkus came off and actually initiated it. Here's Spearman, hogtied at the 32 by Lions. Fatari Lions. Valdosta is a defensive front. A lot of tackles for a loss. A lot of penetration by this front. It's an explosive front. You're going to look right here at Fatari Lions. He jumped up over the block. A lot of athleticism on that front. He jumped right over that block and made the tackle. Ala LaVar Arrington. <laughs> Second down and 11. Aims to pass and sack back at the 24-yard line by Dwayne Smith. He's their stud, their leader up front. The third and long. Dwayne Smith, the biggest impact defensive lineman for Valdosta comes and just one-on-one -on -one beats the offensive center, Tom Hosford and gets a big time sack. Sets up third and 25 right here, I believe, Mark. Third and 20. Long way to go. That's the third sack of the day for Valdosta State. And you have to think about jailbreak screen right here if you're Valdosta. Herkus split wide to the top of your screen. 
And they blow it dead. They were trying, they were trying to set that up, Bob. Valdosta fortunate that they did blow it dead. Valdosta <laughs> surprisingly. On the off. Five yards from the previous spot. Remain third down. Brian Kelly licking his chops because Valdosta on third and 19 is going to play man-to-man -man coverage. That jailbreak screen to Kirkus was again set up, Mark. I'll be very surprised if they play man-to-man -man again on this net. It looks like they're lined up that way again. Third and 24. And a little motion on the left side of the offensive line. Westrick, number 70. Perhaps moving prematurely for Grand Valley State. And uh, this drive seemingly imploding for the Lakers. Dead ball. False start. On the offense, five yards from the previous spot, remains third down. This is what athleticism does in the case of Valdosta State going against an offensive line, Grand Valley State, that has not seen this kind of quickness and athleticism, Mark. It's just an 11-point game with 8.21 to go in the fourth quarter. And Brian Kelly likes what he gets when he's an empty, but it looks like Valdosta's going to go ahead and play two deep zone right here against this. They hand it off to Spearman, the reverse, now to Banks. And he's got a blocker ahead of him. Oh, he put the brakes on, but he appeared to have a little bit more room up the sideline. Lions, once again, covering some ground and making the stop. Number 58 for Valdosta State, a pickup of 13, but far short of the first down. Mark off the empty. We've watched Grand Valley do this all year. There is some speed on this football field. You look at the pursuit right here by Valdosta. These teams may not be the biggest, but I'll tell you what, they play fast and they play hard. C.J. Mosley, four block punts for Valdosta this season, number 15. They're bringing a little bit of pressure. Wow. And a great rocket punt by Renu. Mosley on the return. And he's pushed out of bounds. And up near the first row at the 36-yard line, folks. Hey, plenty of football to go. With 7.20 to go in the fourth quarter. Sometimes it's not safe, even for punters. The NCAA Division II Football Championship, brought to you by the new BMW Z4 Roadster and by Musco Lighting. From community ball fields to professional sports stadiums, Musco makes sports lighting happen. Back here in Florence, Alabama, 7.20 to go in the fourth quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Holly Rowe down in the field. Valdosta State, folks, in the last six minutes of the ball game, has stolen back the momentum in their favor. In good starting field position, Jenkins. Here in the 42, got about five. It'll be second and five to go. Brought down by Lucius Hawkins. Jenkins can run, Mark. Grand Valley State comes with the double inside linebacker blitz, and Jenkins just breaks it outside using true speed to break contain. He is, without a doubt, Valdosta's best weapon right now in this football game. And the fastest player on the field. He is again bumped down at the 42-yard line. It'll be third down and about four to go. Hawkins once again making the stop on Jenkins. I don't think there's any doubt that you have two downs right here to make a first down on third and fourth. But right here, 6.30 left in that game. Faulkner's going to have to make a play. Mosley, the team's top receiver, split wide to the top of your screen. And Faulkner's going to keep it himself on a called play. And it looks like he got to the first down. Oh, it's close. Just across the 45 at the 46-yard line. Buster Faulkner put his hat down and got some yardage. Mark, we see this the side play every week where you fake the ball and you read the defensive end. The defensive end closes. Faulkner keeps the football. They don't run a lot of quarterback to side or predetermined quarterback runs. But right there, Faulkner, I think, picked up the first down with a great effort. And he did, Brian. 
With 6.03 to go, down 11. And remember, instead of going for two the last time they scored a touchdown, the Blazers went for the kick. Markham, if you're Chris Hatcher right now, expect heat from Grand Valley State. Because remember back a few plays ago, first and 10, Valdosta came with play action. Grand Valley sacked them. You have the feeling Grand, Grand uh, Valdosta has to throw the football right here. Expect those two outside linebackers to come with pressure. Here they come. Walker going up top, threw it to the outside as receiver. C.J. Lofton cut inside. Folks, later tonight, the most wide open and anticipated Heisman in history revealed. Dorsey, McGahey of Miami, Palmer of UCSC, Johnson of Penn State, Banks of Iowa, all with a shot at the most prestigious award in college football. Don't miss the Heisman presentation presented by Wendy's at 8 Eastern. 5.45 to go in the fourth. There's the screen once again. Mosley out of the 46, about two yards short of the first down. Richie Mosley using some of that 4.46 speed. Third and two. I want you to watch Keonata Watson right here, the nose guard. Great pursuit right here. Inside out. That's the nose guard out there, Mark, stopping that running. jailbreak screen. He can run. Chris Hatcher's crew has really hung tough. They line up out of the eye. Haven't seen this formation much. On third and short, three to go. Little toss. Got some room, got the first down, Jenkins. They move the chain, Jenkins down to the 32. Lucius Hawkins pushing him out, and the Blazers are alive and well with 4.59 to go. Simple toss sweep, same play they scored the touchdown on. This time Jenkins takes it outside, breaks contain once again. Expect play action right here, Mark. Off the eye formation, expect play action, throw the football down the field. Jenkins now has gone over 100 yards rushing. And Grand Valley State calls a timeout. Coach Hatcher looking to pull the right string, press the right button when we come back. Oh, the Blazers throwing their best punches right now, trying to make a comeback here at Braley Municipal Stadium. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe here in the latter part of the ball game valdosta state has rallied to within 11 points first down and 10 from grand valley state's 31. faulkner to pass looking for mosley incomplete in the end zone faulkner pass incomplete mark i am really impressed with these two football teams not only style of play and level of play because when you watch these tapes and you don't know the size differential between these and Division I players, you can't tell a whole lot of difference. This is big-time football, but also the effort that these teams put into this. There's a certain amount of maturity and sincerity and appreciation and flat-out love for the game that really is right with every player on the field today. Second and ten. Jenkins brought down at the 35 by Keontae Marshall. It'll be third down and long. About 14 to go. Mark, this nose guard, Keontae Marshall right here, he's a player now. He is a bull. You're going to watch him just swim the center, penetration into the backfield. I don't know why he let him get off that island and come back home to Michigan. <laughs> it's a long swim. <laughs> Faulkner on the screen. Complete to Lofton. Run out of bounds in the 26-yard line, short of the first down. Mark, we go about back to four. Oh, excuse, two, excuse me, Mark. We go back to Keontae Marshall at nose guard. The left guard, Tory Howard, is now playing center, number 57, in for Dustin Dodson. So that becomes a really difficult matchup right now for Valdosta. And you see Keontae Marshall in the in the backfield just about every snap. Fourth down, Bob. Four yards to go. They've converted both times today on fourth down. Split backs behind Faulkner. Trying to get the Lakers to jump offside and they don't bite. Faulkner calls a timeout. 
and we'll take one with them. We'll be right back. Fourth down and four in this, the fourth quarter of the Division II championship game. A couple of undefeated teams, Grand Valley State and Valdosta State, Brody in to attempt a field goal from 43 yards out. Wow, knocks it through with authority. He drilled it, Mark. That's the lead to eight points. Three for three on the day with 3.30 to go. Rody, right down the highway. We'll be right back. Only a touchdown and a two-point conversion separate Valdosta State and Grand Valley State right now. And folks, don't forget, coming up after the game, Sports Center with John Bucci Gross and Matt Weiner. Heisman Trophy preview with the show coming up soon. And uh, the Terps lose at home to Florida. Hey, what about that? And is Oakland shopping Miguel Tejada, the American League MVP? Some of the stories on Sports Center coming up after the game. Lesniak on the return. Running east-west. Going nowhere fast. Tackle with the four. Mark, you have to love the way this is playing out for Valdosta. First, the decision by Chris Hatcher to kick the field goal, put them within eight, and they drilled that field goal. Then, with Grand Valley State with their hands team or their expecting onside team on the field, they kicked the ball deep. And Lesniak is forced to eat it about the four-yard line. So it's playing out extremely well right now. It's up to Valdosta's defense. And it's an attacking front that forces negative plays. They've got a lot of valuable rest because the offense has moved the ball here in the second half. You see Grand Valley and I back, something that they're not really used to doing, but they're going to go down the field. For Kirkus. Oh! And broken up. What a play by Elliot Burks. What a big time play by Elliot Burks. We've seen him all day with some reckless plays, and we have him ISO. I'm a little bit surprised at the play call right there by Brian Kelly. This is a great play, Mark. Great play of looking back and making a play on the football. Great effort by Elliott Burks. Sets up second down, and Grand Valley did not have to use a timeout. Now stop the run if you're Val Dustin. Out of the shotgun, Lesnia. And Ames. And it's fumbled. Oh my goodness, what a turn of events. Touchdown, Valdosta. Valdosta, unbelievable. Tim Thompson. And you have to wonder, why are we in the shotgun? But Grand Valley is a shotgun team. Kurt Ames fumbling the snap. Mark, and you've gone all year with your best bag of tricks when it comes to two-point plays. And I wouldn't be surprised if Valdosta calls time out here. But in some ways, there's an injured player down. It gives Valdosta time right now to communicate, come up with your best two-point play. Tim Thompson recovered the loose ball. Remember that, number 91. Thompson also made the interception on Ains earlier in the ball game. One more look at the miscue. It's amazing, but Kurt Ains just does not catch the football. It's that simple. It was a good snap, just did not make a play catching the ball. And what a way, Mark, to come down to the end in the national championship game. It looked as though Kurt Ains was trying to check right yeah, there yeah. coming towards the line of scrimmage. Tim Thompson, the speed rusher off the edge. One more look. Yeah, he was looking the other way. And that's the third turnover of the day for Grand Valley State and arguably easily the most costly. Thompson is the injured player on the field for Valdosta State. We're going to take a short break, come back for the conversion when an attempt to tie this game up. We'll be back.
We are back at Braley Municipal Stadium, Florence, Alabama. Number 91, Tim Thompson, being carried off the field for Valdosta State Blazers. He just recovered a fumble in the end zone for a touchdown to put his team to within two points of tying this championship game. A lot, a lot of time for Chris Hatcher to come back and have time for his two-point play. But right here, just a fumbled exchange. Tim Thompson falls on the football. I may be old school, but being in the shotgun coming out of my own end zone is difficult for me to swallow. This will be for the tie. They set up to go for two. And Grand Valley State calls a timeout. Last year, it came down to the last 29 seconds. Grand Valley State's defense didn't quite hold up. Will they this year? The injured warrior on the sideline, Tim Thompson, and Ains, one of his counterparts. We'll be back. This is turning into a battle of attrition. That's Marquise Turner, the starting cornerback for Valdosta State, being carried off the field. And Mark, let's set the stage. One team 14-0, one team 13-0. They played since August without a break, and it's down to a two-point play to tie the game. Faulkner out of the shot. He's going to take it and pass it. It's a tie game. Lofton. Jesse Tuggle has just leaped out of the stadium. Incredible turn of events right here, Mark. The a young sophomore quarterback, Buster Faulkner, steps up, thought about running into the end zone, and then just shot put it for the two-point play. Valdosta State trailed by a score of 24 to 6. They have stormed back with 18 consecutive points to tie the game at 24 all. What looked like almost certain victory for Grand Valley State a few minutes ago is now in the balance. And let's watch it again. Right here, Faulkner sees the grass. There's the goal line, but he's going to stop. And right here, Mark, he shot puts the ball to C.J. Lofton for the touchdown. And we are tied, and there's three minutes and nine seconds left. Grand Valley with no timeouts. Valdosta with two timeouts. Now Grand Valley, God, Grand Valley has to run it out. And let's look at Chris Hatcher and Buster Faulkner. Buster Faulkner, what he may lack in, you might call sex appeal or flash and dash, he certainly makes up for it with results and efficiency. And how, how does Grand Valley State recover? Here's Banks. Nice return out to the 32-yard line. Well, this is usually Ains and Kirkus time. Don't forget, coming after the game, folks, at Sports Center, Bucci Gross and Weiner in the studio. Heisman race preview, basketball, and a little baseball news. But right here, right now, it's all about a couple teams trying to keep their picture-perfect seasons alive for the title. Now, Brian Kelly with the senior quarterback, Kurt Ains, who's a little bit rattled right now. Grand Valley with two timeouts. Excuse me, Valdosta with two timeouts. No place right now for Grand Valley to play conservative, Mark. They have to go try to win this football game right now. Elliot Burks is locked up on purpose. That's the matchup to watch. And the catch made, round one, goes to Kirkus at the 40-yard line, about two yards shy of the first down, working on Burks. And you have to think about the field goal problems that Grand Valley State has had. They missed a fake opportunity. They botched the snap. Very easily, Mark, this game could come down to a field goal right here. No timeouts remaining for the Lakers. Kirkus went to the top of the screen. On the out and up. Kirkus caught it. They're in field goal range at the 26. He gave him the out and up move, and Ames was with him the whole way. That's the way their careers have played out. Why would it change now? I'm a little bit surprised that Valdosta State goes to a three deep, but you're going to see a down, out, and up against the three deep corner, Elliot Burks. Great coaching by Grand Valley. Elliot Burks is an aggressive guy, Mark, that goes to make the big play. They are now 
pretty much in field goal range for David Hendricks. But they may want more. Usually the quick game when he puts him under center. To Kirkus, his knee was down as he caught the ball at the 26-yard line. It'll be second and down the and about nine to go. There's a look at the place kicker, David Hendricks. Ten for ten on the season, although earlier they had problems on the exchange and the hold and the snap. Marcus, you see again the trips formation. Isolating Kirkus up here at the top of the field on Elliott Burke. Here they come. Pressure. They run the screen. That was almost picked off. Number 23, Aganga Williams. Thinking he should have had that one. It'll be third down and nine. For those of you just joining us, it's number one Grand Valley against number two Valdosta for only the second time in the history of this game. Mark two undefeated teams. It's incredible. 27-0 between the two teams. It's 24-24. Minute and 20 seconds to go. And right here, it's about a 43-yard field goal from this spot on the field. Kirkus split to the top of your screen. Right here, the first down marker. Looks like he got it. Mark, that's big time. That is big time. Down to the 17. Give Kurt Ains credit right now of coming back. Once again, they're in trips. They get the single coverage at the top of the field, and he throws the out right here. And here's the first down marker. Great throw, great catch. That's big time ball. Oh, boy. I don't Kirkus. care what level it is. Kirkus knew exactly where the marker was. 1.15 to go. Now protect the football if you're Grand Valley State. Make sure you get a field goal opportunity. They give it to Spearman. Got a good block ahead of him. Spearman followed that block all the way down to the 10. He ran behind and up the back of Lewis Dawson. Gain of about seven. See Reggie Spearman, the little five foot eight tailback following these blocks. You don't want a holding penalty right now if you're Grand Valley State. See Reggie Spearman, the little five foot eight tailback following these blocks. You don't want a holding penalty right now if you're Grand Valley State. You definitely don't want a mistake. Last year they lost it in the dying minutes of the game. This year they're looking to win it. Grand Valley State as Terrence Banks. Comes in motion to the right side. A little different formation right now as you see Circa Kirkus over to the trip side, Mark. They run the screen, the bubble screen. Kirkus. Touchdown! Doesn't get any better net. Heck no. 24-24, all the momentum on the side of Valdosta. Grand Valley behind Kurt Ains. David Kirkus take the football the length of the field. Mark. You could not have written a better script. The only thing, they left a minute and four and two timeouts for Valdosta State. They get the hole down, and the extra point is good. Kirkus, meanwhile, what a way to go out. A career high, 270 yards receiving. Ames to Kirkus. Ames and Kirkus. Sounds like a law firm. And right now, they are bringing law and order to the gridiron. Lots of time when we come back. Driving down the road, I spot a dead emu. Having just lost my girlfriend, I decide it might look nice mounted in my pool room. However, it quickly becomes apparent that he's not dead. Not at all. I was a touch worried. Until I awoke in a pool hall frequented by a local sorority. And I ask you, was this coincidence or part of something bigger? Thirty-one twenty-four. Grand Valley State just going ahead on the Ains to Kirkus pass and catch and run. Sports Center coming up after the game. Heisman race capsules. 
college basketball, the Terps losing against Florida. And Miguel Tejada, is he on the trade block or isn't he? All that coming up on SportsCenter. Now, Valdosta State with timeouts remaining. They got two. Grand Valley State with none. Should ladder all that ball back there in Jenkins. Out to the 35-yard line. Number 82, Andre Zeller. Another way to find a bubble. Here you're going to see Kirkus on the side of the trips. He's going to bubble out. Banks is going to come down and, and, and get a block. Another way to run the jailbreak to the trips. You're going to see Banks right there on a great shot block. And just a tremendous effort right here. Gets the ball into the end zone. Kirkus with a career day. Not a way to cap a career. Up to the young quarterback, Buster Faulkner, right now, Mark, with two timeouts. And maybe showing a bit of his youth, Faulkner, fumbling the snap. And we go Faulkner. back again to the center in the football game. Number 69, Dustin Dotson hurt. They have to move Torrey Howard, number 57, to center. And that has hurt. Valdosta here late in this football game. Howard, the usual starting left guard. Not only that, but Kenyatta lined up right across from him. Faulkner looking downfield, and it's dropped by Lofton. Greg Lofton had it for the first down at midfield. It'll be third down and 17. Mark, they come back and they run the square into Lofton, CJ's younger brother. I mean, you have to make that play. You have to make that play. Unfortunate right there for Valdosta and Buster Faulkner. 27 seconds to go. Two timeouts remaining. Jenkins in the flat. Tiptoes out of bounds at the 34-yard line. They've got to get to the 46. It'll be fourth down and 12 to go. This is the ball game with 20 seconds to play. Chris Hatcher's career ended here in 94 with a loss in double overtime in the championship game as a player. Mark, and I think you have to go back to that square in that loft at number seven dropped just a few minutes ago. The deep clear and run the square in right here. Bring him down and bring him underneath and clear. Only one of these teams will remain undefeated. Faulkner stays alive. And it's picked off. Darren Smith with seven seconds to play. And a great scene over on the Grand Valley State sideline. Their student bodies come out of the stands, Mark. <laughs> they drove 13 hours down here. They're going to get all they can get over there on that sideline. And what a way to punctuate a career of two great players in the school's history, Kurt Ames and David Kirkus. The two of them combining on that last drive to score moments ago. Ames going five for five. All to Kirkus, total of 61 yards, and Coach Brian Kelly is about to corral the first championship in the school's history. Mark, big time players, big time players. I'm impressed with this whole atmosphere, and look at this scene on the field right here. This is good as it gets anywhere at any level of football. It is pure, it is true. They played off all the way down to the championship game. Grand Valley State coming out victorious, 31-24. Coming up next, Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Bob Davey, Holly Rowe, and the rest of our ESPN gang from Florence, Alabama. I'm Mark Jones. Right now, it's Sports Center.